It's showtime! Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Mitch and this is Unseen Universe. And that's right, guys. That is right. It is showtime. It's the IHS or the International Herpetological Society show this very Sunday. So who's excited? I'm excited. I know somebody else who's excited. It's my right hand man. It's my partner in crime. It's Gavilar from Impossible Inverts. Gavilar, how's it going, buddy? Hello. <laughs> he can hardly contain himself. That's how excited he is. So I'm ready. Are you ready, dude? I'm so yep. ready, man. Yep. Gab's ready. I'm ready. Everyone's ready. How about you guys at home? Let's see who we have in the house. Let's see who's in. I can see already. Greg is in. I can always rely on good old Greg. Thank you very much. Sir. Right, how are you doing, matey boy? It's Claire's in the house. How are you doing, Claire? Uh, Jeremy is in the house. How are you doing, Jeremy? Nice video earlier, my friend. Nice one, nice one. We'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> Ian, nice to have you with us again, my friend. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, do D Professor Critters is in the house. How's it going, buddy? You're all right, matey. Thanks for joining us. Who else have we got in the house? Has D Professor Critters been with us before? Gav, I think he ha he might have dropped yeah, in. Yeah, I think so. I think the Professor's Critters, you have dropped in with us before, and I'm pretty certain I've uh, seen you in the chat. So thanks so much for coming back to us, my friends. Um, who else have we got in? Andy is in the house. How's it going, Andy? And Stuart is in the house. Stuart, how are you going, matey? Have you found that scorpion yet? <laughs> so uh, there you go. And I think I forgot to tell you about that, Gav. Uh, Stuart's lost a scorpion somewhere. <laughs> All right. A big one. Spooky Dukes is in the house. How's it going, Spooky Dukes? Gav, can you just speak a second? Because I'm not sure if I can hear you. Hello. Hello. I can't hear Gavilar. Just a minute. Now I'll speak again. Hello. Now, you see, this is what happens, man, when you try new technology. You try the earplugs. Let me just check to see if they are working. If not, I'm going to have to unplug them. So you'll have to bear with me a second. I have tried some new Bluetooth um, earplugs. They are supposed to be they are supposed to be connected. It says they're connected, but I can't hear a thing. So there you go. Uh, Gavilar, say hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to change that. So that's not worked. Absolutely rubbish. Now speak, Gavilar. Hello. Hello, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay, right. Enough of that. Tried some new technology. I don't know what's happened. They were working a minute ago, and they seem to have just stopped working. So there you go. Absolutely rubbish. Okay, let's get back to it. So as the poster suggested... <laughs> Thanks, Ian. <laughs> it's fine. I can hear everything now. Uh, the volume was up. I tried some new Bluetooth speakers um, and um, earplugs, and they're not, they, they did work, and now they're not working. But anyway, enough of that. So, tonight, we have... It's an open, it's an open, uh, open mic style thing tonight. We call ours the drop-in, because open mic is used by other people, and we wanted to be a bit different, didn't we, Gav? So we called it a yeah. drop-in. Um, and so that means, guys, if you or anybody wants to come on to the chat, come on to the stream, be on screen, you are most welcome, guys. You are most welcome because we're just going to talk about shows. We're going to talk about how awesome the Doncaster show is. Um, and, um, and yeah, so if you got any experience about going to shows or you have no experience about going to shows, but you really, really want to go to shows, um, if you're a trader, if you're just, you know, a curtain twitcher, whatever you are, if you want to come 
and you want to come on there with me and Gav and speak to us and everybody else about shows, you are more than welcome. Gavala, you want to drop a link in there? Gav's going to put a link in the oh, chat. Mate. On it, he's on it. Gav's going to put a link in the chat, and that will be your stream key. If you want to come on and say hello and have a little chat about uh, bugs in general and shows, obviously we're focusing on the Doncaster show tonight. One of the oldest shows around, one of the best in my opinion, but there you go. When I say best, I mean busiest, of course. <laughs> there are lots and lots of awesome shows, which we'll be talking about all of them up and down the country. But today, it's all about the Doncaster show. Um, so, yeah, if you uh, want to come on board, follow the link, give us a shout, get yourself in the green room, and we'll put you on. Jeremy, Jeremy said he promised he'll jump on tonight. There you go. It's in writing. Jeremy, get yourself over here, my friend, whenever you feel like it, buddy. No problem. No sweat. No pressure. Nothing, mate. Just get yourself over, and we'll uh, have a good natter. Anyway, so as the show... Um, as the show uh, thumbnail suggested, we do have a special guest on tonight, as well as all you lovely people. But we're calling the special because it's our very own Laura, Laura Ashley Huckabee from Dead Set Co. Now, we all know Laura. We all love Laura. She is multi-award winning taxidermist. And I don't say that lightly because just go check out her website, man. She's got absolutely amazing stuff. The awards are right there for you to see. I think she's won the uh, best um, taxidermist um, or something to that effect. She'll tell us all about it, I'm sure. But it's the I think she won two two years running. I think she's won the best taxidermist, and also she's uh, won. Uh, I think she won the best uh, original business or something like that. I think it was. So uh, that's our Laura now. We all know Laura for her amazing taxidermy skills. She's been, uh, she's just been one step ahead and at the forefront of taxidermy. So, um, we also don't say on Laura is that she's also very, very busy with the IHS Society. She um, does a lot of things behind the scenes. She's uh, not only a board member, she's like, she does. Uh, she does the uh, monthly IHS newsletter and she does the quarterly magazine Herb to Hip Tile as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, about Laura and uh, all her amazing talents later on. So that's why we're calling her a special guest, because she's got some awesome insight behind the scenes of the IHS. So uh, she's obviously the perfect person. And also she's a very good friend of mine. I've known her many, many years. Uh, we've done a couple of shows together and uh, we've uh, we always have a good natter and uh, yeah she's just an amazing person so uh, that's our Laura she is coming in a little bit later I'm not sure what time she's coming in but I think she's having a few te technical difficulties and I think also we've also got Zoe and maybe Rick joining us from Mantis Atlantis they are going to be joining us a little bit later on too Got to say hello to the Invertebrarian, our very own Adam. How's it going, buddy? You all right, my friend? I hope you're having a I believe they were calling us Jobbies. Jobbies? Jimmy yeah. Jobbies? Oh, my oh, goodness. Jobbies are turds, aren't they? Thanks, man. Thanks so much, you know. I was, I was refraining from the uh, abuse and, you know, stereotypical kind of like one-liners tonight. I was going to, I was going to refrain from it. In fact, I will. I'm going to rise above it tonight, man. I'm going to rise above it. It's probably had one too many dram brewers and whiskeys and God knows what else. What time is it? Quarter past nine. He'll probably be sozzled by now, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go, Adam. Cheers to you, my friend. I'll cheers. Pepsi Max time. Um, and uh, I'm sure you're probably on your fifth uh, whiskey by now. <laughs> so there you go. So... Let's have it. Let's have it. Who's going to the show on Sunday? Who's going to the show on Sunday? Come on. Me. Me. I'm going. Gav's going. Well, at least I hope so. Anyway, I can't do it on my own. Not these days. I'm too old. <laughs> 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 hey, my goodness. Yes, it weren't that long ago. I used to go trek down to the uh, Doncaster. All by me lonesome, but not anymore. Got my buddy Gav helping me out. Ian's not going. That's a shame, buddy. That's a shame. I know. Uh, I think I know he went to last one, didn't he? I know you do like to get there whenever you can. So, uh, 
So yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Ian came to see us, didn't he? On uh, yeah, it was either September or November, wasn't it? I think so. I think it was a November one. I think it might have been the November one. So uh, so yeah, yeah. Shame you're not coming, mate. Shame you're not coming. Never mind. Stuart's not going either. Oh my goodness, is anybody going? Did I say hello to Spooky Dukes? I think I did, but I might have missed it. So uh, hello, Spooky Dukes. There you go. Yeah, you did. I put it up on the screen, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, Claire's not going. Oh my goodness, Peter's not going. Well, you know, you, why? What is going on? Why is there nobody going? Or maybe they're going to the MEF instead. It's uh, it's on the same, it's on yeah, the same day, isn't it? So, uh, I don't know what that's all about. Like, just somebody, somebody changed the day for goodness sake. <laughs> so, anyway, we have got Jeremy. Jeremy is in the background. How's it going, Jeremy? Are you ready, my friend? Give me a thumbs up, my friend. Here we go. Here we go. Hey. Jeremy is in the house. <laughs> See, I told you Jeremy, guys I was going to come on the stream. <laughs> wild world. Just, he's just popped in. He's just finished his own premiere, and they, he's here or he's here already. Don't mess about, dear Jeremy. You don't mess about, mate. Right. You, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you're all over the place, my friend. Good on you. Hey, I did say when you guys do the next stream, I'll pop on. Because <laughs> honestly, the last that. two streams that I was in, I was ill as heck. I was honestly, I was like, I can't yeah. come on. I'll be sniffing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always blowing my nose on streams, man. It's not, honestly, it's terrible. It's terrible. So uh... oh, it was horrible. Like last week was, oh, I had the worst cold. And I just went back to work that week as well. So that wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What do you add We'll save the details for another day. I actually don't really know what, what you do. I'm not sure if you've told me what you do, Jeremy, or whether or not you were... I didn't know whether you were going off to university or what you were up to. But uh, anyway, we'll... Uh, yeah, yeah. Go on, quickly. Tell us what you what do you do, Jeremy. Oh, Let's at see. the moment, I'm just... Uh, I work at a children's farm. So, like, I'm one of the farm workers there. So I'm pretty much everywhere, all over the place. And then okay. uh, I am looking to get into... Uh, the, I'm going to be a healthcare worker soon. Just okay. waiting for some bloods to be done and everything. Wow! Um, but for now, like just just to get like something on my CV saying I have worked with animals. Yeah, uh, I've got this job for now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well done, Jeremy. Well done. Uh, that's nice uh, that is actually that's a very noble cause, my friend. Thank you so much. Somebody's got to uh, got to do that, you know. And uh, health workers get a bad rap these days, and uh, you know, yeah. from time to time. So uh, honestly, it's fantastic that you're doing that. Maybe you should get him on for a Q and A. Oh, I'm definitely. Gonna do this. <laughs> I'm down for that. This is why I uh, I didn't want to go into too many details because uh, yeah well definitely Jeremy's definitely on my head. Sounds like a good one. Uh, I'm yeah, uh, I'm hoping good. to start I'm doing the I'm hoping to start doing the interviews. Like, I don't. I thought that as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I didn't want to say. I didn't want to say anything. So uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, it's not one of those farms. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, we have our esteemed guest here. Not that you're not esteemed, Jeremy. Obviously, you are esteemed, of course, my friend. But uh, Laura's here. Laura, Laura's in the background. Laura, when you're ready, give me a thumbs up, and uh, and I'll I'll bring you on. But first, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly introduce Laura again. So, for those of you who have just tuned in, we've got Laura on tonight. Now, this is Laura Ashley Huckabee. Now. If you don't know Laura, where have you been? But if you if you've been around the uh, exotic um, industry, around the Facebook pages and the groups, and just the exotic world in general, you will, I'm sure, have heard of Laura from Dead Set Company. Now, we all know Laura for her amazing taxidermy skills, multi award winning taxidermist. I might have. I'm gonna have to ask her about that when she comes on. So get ready, Laura, for the blushing because I'm bl gonna big you up. Um, and also, I know she's won awards for a uh, unique and original uh, business of uh, taxidermy as well. Um, so there you go. But also, not only is Laura uh, well known around the exotic industry for her amazing <clears throat> taxidermy and, uh, and all the amazing stuff that she does, uh, but she also, you might not know this, but she also works behind the scenes at the IHS, the International Herpetological Society. She um, runs all the social media platforms and the website. She does the website herself too. But not only that, she also is the sole editor of the quarterly magazine, The Herptile. And if that's not enough, she does the monthly IHS newsletter as well. I mean, 
How impressive is that? I can see her, I can feel her blushes from here because the reason I say that is because Laura, even though she's so talented and got all these things going on, she must be, I don't know how she finds the time, to be honest. Um, she clearly doesn't work hard enough in some other areas of her life. <laughs> but uh, because, but she's one of the loveliest people you'll ever meet. She's modest. And and um, obviously, that's why I'm saying she'll probably be blushing right now. Because uh, But we have to big her up because here she is. This is Laura. Laura, we're bringing you on, my friend. Woo! How's it going, mate? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? How are you? You all right? Tired, but yeah, no, I'm all right. Tired from all from just being so awesome all day long, every day. It must be exhausting for you. <laughs> Honestly, full time job. Full time job. There you go. You see, full time job. There you go. So uh, yeah. Anyway, it's great of you to join us, Laura. Um, obviously, we're here to talk about um, the show, um, and we're hoping you're going to give us a little bit of insight. But um, obviously. There's only so much you can say about everybody who works behind the scenes. <laughs> so <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> that's for another. That's for that's for another one, I think. So uh, so yeah. So just want to quickly say as well, Laura, as uh, you've got your website, Laura Deadsetco Co dot UK. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Etsy. You've got yeah. a shop on Etsy. You have got your, I know you're on Facebook, obviously, and you're on Instagram. Are you on TikTok as well? I am. I don't do, I am. I don't do TikTok, so I'm not sure. I thought, that's why I thought I'd ask. So we're on TikTok as well. So she's on all the socials. Um, and uh, so, yeah, website, Etsy, shop, all Laura's amazing taxidermy stuff is on there. But I'm sure most of you are fully, fully aware of where you can go and what you can do with that. So, so Laura, how prepared are you for Sunday? Um, you know what? I'm actually in a pretty good place. I know we talk a lot. I think every single show we're at about prep we and how we're always behind and how we're always doing it last minute. Do you know what? Other than a couple of things to do in the morning, I'm actually packed and ready to go. Wow. For once. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. You see, this me and Gab were talk, me and Gab were talking about this because obviously, uh, as a trader of livestock, you know we uh, a lot of our stuff has to be done last minute because we can't be, yeah. you know, as much as I'd as much as I'd love to, we can't pack everything away, you know, like on a Friday or a Saturday night and on Friday night, you know, and and then it's all done. Um, there's just lots of little things that we have to do that uh, you know, changing substrates and stuff, or if it's tissue, changing tissue and stuff like that. Because it gets dirty really quickly, so you basically have to leave it right to the last minute. But with your stuff, you know, your stuff's ready, it's dry, it's there, you know, you can just get everything. If for you, it's just about wrapping everything up and putting it in putting it in boxes, right? Yeah, I made that sound right. really simple, but I'm sure it's oh, not. Yeah, like, yeah, just chuck it all in. No. Uh, <laughs> in <a> box. <laughs> I mean, the problem is I don't like to close the website off too early, so... I tend yes. to be working, you know, I tend to pack everything up the two days before the show. Um, and then uh, it's a case of doing car Tetris, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's I'm quite lucky in the sense that because I don't have live animals, I can be, or should be, a lot more prepared than what I usually am. Um <laughs> Yeah, but you're very busy. But, yeah. That's what said. You're very busy. So, you know, um, you can't always be as prepared as you always want to be, you know. And so, and maybe, just maybe, maybe you might take things a little bit for granted because you've got no livestock. You know, you think, well, it won't take me that long to sort those few things out. And then, you know, inevitably, things always take a bit longer than you anticipated. And then, you know, do you ever have any uh, any shows where you basically – up until two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday morning, still like getting stuff ready. I know I am. <laughs> I tend to like for a lot of the shows, I do tend to stay over the night before, but it, it's not uncommon for me to be working until like you know 10, 11 o'clock at night and then getting up at crack of dawn to pack the car. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, it's got better over the years, I'll be honest. Like, yeah. first shows, what four years ago, god, yeah. 
you know, especially because I had another job at the same time. Yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. having dead set full time now. Yeah. It does definitely make things easier. Yeah, you you soon get into the uh, you soon get into that routine, don't you? You know, of uh, what needs doing. It's almost like it becomes second nature after a while. Do you know, I yeah, it, just go on. I was going to say just... it, it it becomes like a a tasseless almost now. Like I know <clears throat> how the car packs. I know what things go into. You know, because for a lot of my stuff, it's the same same sort of stuff every show. You know, in the sense of physical, is it a dome? Is it a frame? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've got like I use certain things to pack into, so it, it yeah, it's a bit streamlined now compared to what you yeah, say. yeah. Well, that that I guess that's the other important thing, isn't it? Because like you, because a lot of your stuff is like frames, and some of it, and there's obviously the glass, you know, the glass yeah. domes and all that sort of stuff. You know, you've you've probably got. To, have you got? Is there like special? special packing that you use have you got some secret stuff like you use you know we, we just use it's... bubble wrap and packing peanuts you know but uh are you, do you use the same as all as all me as us mere mortals or have you got some special stuff like you <laughs> yeah just do you know ikea does fantastic um paper <laughs> bubble wrap which works superbly and then um i use their crates as well so put the frames in the crates with the bubble wrap and it works perfectly because you can carry multiple into the show. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. If any of you guys uh, want to jump in with any questions, feel free to uh, to take the reins. Just let me know if you've got anything. I just want to quickly say um, hello to Phil. I just noticed that Phil was in the house. And uh, who else have we got? Who else Steve, have we got? Oh, Steve's in the yeah. house as well. How's it going, Steve? How's it going, buddy? So just quickly want to, um, I just quickly want to say hello to anybody who's just tuned in just a minute ago. We are in fact now speaking to Laura. We're getting a few little tips. Ikea, we've got some details about that. So we've got a few little secrets and uh, yeah, we're just going to probe Laura a little bit more. And then, um, but basically what I want to say is if anybody in the chat has got any questions or star things that for Laura, then uh, just let me know if anybody uh, if anybody's got any questions for Laura. Otherwise, and if you guys want to ask Laura anything, just say so. If not, I will just continue talking to Laura because uh, we're never short of things to talk about, are we, Laura? Because we always uh, we always chat at the shows, and it, it was something you just said to me a minute ago um, that your first show that you actually. Um, went as dead set was four years ago which is just before a couple of years just before covid wasn't it like so yeah you'd actually only been doing shows for like a year or so just before covid and now that surprised me because for some reason i think it's because i've seen you around the shows for so many years i just assumed that you'd been doing the shows as dead set you know yourself um before then but i remember and i forgot to bring them with me I have still got, can you remember, MEF, I think it was your first show, and yeah. you were there, you had your one little table in the corner, you had half a dozen items on it, I remember this, yeah. and it's. Uh, and I bought I bought two of your domes with the butterflies, and I still got them, they're still in my bug room in the house, and I remember that, I'm cherishing them, because one day, when you're rich and famous, <laughs> I'm going to say... I'm going to I'm going to say I've got these. I've got these from Laura on her very first show. And uh, these were one of the first things that she knocked out for the shows. I'll always remember those. They were, they, they were literally like some of the third or fourth domes that I ever made. And I think it was probably the first thing I ever sold at a show as well. Like, but no, I'd previously done the shows selling reptiles and then Dead Set took over. And yeah, yeah, so that that yeah, four years, which is insane. It is insane. It really is insane. It seems like it's so much longer, but I think, like I said, it's because I think I've known you longer, longer than that, obviously. Mm. So uh, yeah, feel like it's been been a lot longer. So, so coming on to that, how long have you been uh, been kind of working for the IHS or working within the organisation of of IHS? Because obviously, the IHS has been around since. Is it 1969, I think it was founded? Yeah, um, yeah, we had a 60-year anniversary a couple of years back. Yeah, um, so uh, 
So how many years have you been actually been been with them? I think it will be about three or four now. It was oddly similar timing to, to Dead Set. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And I initially joined just as a normal creative member, um, just somebody younger, you know, I obviously used to breed a lot of reptiles myself. Yeah. Um, and then as time went on, I took over the sort of website and stuff. We got the new yeah. website which is yeah. considerably better than the old one, if anyone remembers it. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember that old one, man. That yeah. like, I mean, it was barely a website, really, wasn't it, to be fair? It was, <laughs> yeah, it, it was atrocious. I mean, I think, and, and I think we're all aware of that. So we've got yeah. the new website, yeah. which is obviously a lot nicer looking, um, actually has information on it, which is handy. Um, yeah. And then due to just people, you know, leaving um, the previous editor sort of, I think just decided to retire from it. I took yeah. on the newsletter and then the herb tile and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it. you know what? They probably uh, they probably all sit there over the evening, you know, thinking, what can we get Laura to do next? I've been banned <laughs> from doing more jobs actually. Um, oh really? <laughs> oh, I've been banned. Yeah, apparently I do enough, which you know is fair enough. But uh, yeah, I I'm, think... I'm, I'm not allowed. <laughs> No, I think I think well, you know, they're probably they're obviously conscious that they don't want to dilute your attention too much, you know. So uh, you know, you obviously do an amazing job with the newsletter and the magazine, and you've got your own stuff going on as well, obviously. So uh, you know, they uh, they can't uh, they can't get you doing too much. So uh, so right, we've got a question from Spooky Dukes. How did you start or get into taxidermy? I mean, that's just the ultimate question, right? So. Yeah, it's the one that a lot of people ask me, and I think <clears throat> people expect like a really cool origin story. Um, <laughs> there literally isn't one. Like, I, I, my me and my best friend used to make each other things for Christmas every year. Um, one of these years, I think I'd seen something. I think some of the museum style domes. I thought, oh, it'd be really cool, you know, to make my own. And I made I made this dome for my friend, and it, it was similar to the original ones you've got. Um, put it on Facebook as you do, and people really liked them. And then I made a couple more, and I did that first show, which was the um, Midland was show. The Midland, I think it was. It was a Midland yeah. entomological fair, yeah. Yeah, and and I had something like six domes, my little table. It was cute. Yeah, um, I remember it well. Yeah, and. You know, obviously, I'm a qualified accountant. I was still doing that part time, and then I just kept making the Instagram, you know, and and sharing and yeah. and then learning. and And I was quite lucky because yeah. Paul, who runs the Midland shows, um, with with uh, Warren, yeah, um, he sort of took me under his wing a little bit and taught me how to pin insects, and and I just sort of fell in love with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, do you think, uh, I mean, you've obviously got an eye for detail because you can't do what you do without being incredibly anal. <laughs> and I think, and have an amazing, and I, now I know you won't be offended at that because we've talked about how, what kind of personality and what kind of characteristics you need to have in order to be able to do something like that. And I think we all agree yeah. that looking at, just looking at, just looking at the uh, kind of things that you you are doing now um you, you need a special set of skills now, i'm not going to go all liam neeson on you but you need a special set of skills and uh you know um you've obviously got those do you think the uh because you did you said you were a qualified accountant that yeah. obviously takes a certain set of skills as well you know very kind of an analytical kind of mind that yeah. sort of thing attention to detail yeah. ability to kind of like you know um look at things in a really creative way, you know, uh, what you would consider to be mundane and, and, and very logical, but also be able to be creative with that, you know, sort of thing. So, uh, and I think, I think that's obviously stood you in good stead as well. So uh, do you, would you, would you say you were as good an accountant as you are a taxidermist? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, I, I enjoy both and I still love accounting weirdly. Um, <laughs> but this is something that took practice, you know, yeah. like yeah, I, of people yeah, of say to me, you know, like, how do you get so good at pinning? You know, and now I don't even think about it because I just, 
I sit on an evening happily doing it to relax, which is insane. But a lot of insects got destroyed in my first year. You know? Yes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. And it, it's just one of those things that you have to keep at. I mean, um, you'll, you'll remember Mike's partner. He is, he sat there many nights watching me destroy yeah. Uh, yeah. various insects and stuff. And and yeah. literally, as I was saying, Paul, he gave me something like 100 insects that were already damaged. They were his breeders, so it didn't really yeah. matter. I damaged them more. Yeah. And I just sat and I just went through them. You know, yeah. and and I used yeah. to be terrified to pin insects, genuinely, like because it just it seemed insane. Yeah. And now it's just it's just second like nature now, you know. Yeah, and I was yeah. there doing yeah. and stuff now, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm always scared of breaking them with my big clumsy hands. I mean, yeah. I probably do have small hands. I am a woman. <laughs> and I do have quite dingy ones. <laughs> Um, Has the advantage. But you've got all this advantage. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not an advantage, I think. Um, yeah. But I do know plenty of, of male entomologists who, who do quite well. I don't know how looking at them, like really, <laughs> with their big Kenny ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big hot like, hands, just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I just think, how on earth do you not just crush them accidentally? You know, but yeah, some of those yeah. things. So uh, we've got a quick question here from uh, Claire. She says, what would you say is the best starter taxidermy? Oh, I know what the worst one is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's no... The thing, the thing with taxidermy, if you're wanting to do insects, it, it doesn't matter. You know, they're all, you know most butterflies are going to be equally as easy or difficult you know obviously yeah. tiny ones will be harder than bigger ones for obvious reasons an atlas moth is considerably easier to pin than yeah, than yeah. a small thingy um and moths do tend to be easier than butterflies because they they have better veins and they're just a bit stronger and they don't yeah. care as easy okay. yeah um i would say something like a tarantula i would have more skill set for first you know emptying the abdomen it's not enjoyable it's pretty gross and it's yeah. easy to mess up yeah 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 um if you're looking at more traditional taxidermy as in animals birds fantastic to start with um, okay they've just they just tend to be a little bit easier to skin and deflesh and things like that um yeah than, yeah than like a, a yeah. squirrel or something you know yeah, excellent. So, uh, did you say what the? Because Ian's chimed in. What is the worst? I just saw that. Yeah. Know, um, so. The worst butterfly. Well, moth. Um, everyone always thinks it's a butterfly, but the worst one to pin is the sunset moth. And I think you'll remember that one. It's the really bright one with the rainbow. Yeah. And it's still absolutely. But even veteran people who do my job hate them because. Yeah. They just the scales on the wings just you just look at them and they fall off and they fall <laughs> apart and then tethers come off. Oh my goodness! And they're honestly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to pin like ten of them to get half a dozen decent ones. No matter how yeah. good you are at your job, they're yeah. just they're very cool. <laughs> right. So they're not really very uh, they're not really very cost effective then, in terms of um, you know. No. <laughs> so, no. just, yeah. just I refuse to pin them up until last year when I'm like, okay, I, I can't keep bite making other people do it for me. Yes, yeah, true, true. And you know, it's uh, some things that you sometimes have, I guess you just you want to take on that challenge as well, sometimes, I suppose, as well, you know, just to hone your craft, so to speak. Truth? You know, yeah, yeah, so. Let's just have a quick look. Who has said what we've got? Uh, we've got Zoe in the house. Uh, Zoe, honestly, if you want to come on, don't uh, don't use the fact that there's four people on the screen. We can get ten <laughs> people on the screen. It's no problem. So, but if you don't, if if you want to pass, that's entirely up to you. Honestly, um, I, I don't mind. Look, it's four people. We can get more on. So if you if you want to come on, it's perfectly fine. Honestly. We are talking, um, we're mainly talking to Laura at the moment, but that's just because um, 
it's the perfect opportunity to uh, pick her brains a little bit. I mean, I know everybody's dead excited to speak to you about the taxidermy stuff, but I'm going to um, try not to probe too much on the taxidermy side of things because um, I am planning on doing a, uh, a one-to-one -one interview with Laura at some point in the future, which she, I know, has said. She's looking like that, but she was well up for it, man. She was like, yes, yes, I want to do it. <laughs> So he wants I to want to do it now, food. now you've told so, everyone. Uh, yes, so we're not, we're not going to delve too deep into the, uh, the, the, the whole backstory of Laura because uh, we're going to de I'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to delving a little bit deeper um, at some point in the future. But um, let's just have a quick look to see if anybody else is in the house. We've got Sidex. How's it going, buddy? You're welcome to come hey. on if you want as well. Everybody is welcome. We've got room for more people. Don't feel like, because we've got Laura on, she is more than happy to share the spotlight. Are you, Laura? You all right with that? I am, you? yes, absolutely. <laughs> you see, there you go. That's the type of person she is. Well, we're definitely going to speak to Laura a little bit later, a little bit more about uh, show preparations as well. So, uh uh greg is saying um hang on let's have a look would it work on my phone or would i need a mic no no it works on your phone look at jeremy jeremy's always ru ruining atmos we is like uh <laughs> we, we, we just portrait we just, we just portrait kind of look you know he's always like this one i'm sure he, i he... can turn it sideways i think <laughs> no, it's fine dude it's fine i'm only, I'm only, messing, with it. I'm only messing see i can't come on without you guys bullying me wait <laughs> Oh. Does that work? Let's get oh, it's magic. Hey. It's magic. Well, I've got to scoot to the side, so there, you there go. we go. There you <laughs> go. Better? You see, it's better now. You know, it's not better. We get to see. I thought we were going to get to see. What's? I want to know what's in the wardrobe at the side of you there, there Jeremy. If you open that wardrobe. It's, <laughs> it's the like, only thing that doesn't have buttons. It's just like loads of socks and, <laughs> and like, oh, loads of socks and pants going to fall out. Oh. That's where I keep my bramble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hide my bramble bush. Full of bramble. <laughs> <laughs> now I imagine there'll be loads of like uh, limited edition Star Wars figures and stuff falling out of there. Man, I imagine. Oh no! <laughs> no, <Definitely not. laughs> no, no, no thing, Cast all them in inverts. <laughs> yeah, every little spot in my room is just full of bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's why you need that shed. You need to get that shed. I'm getting it soon. It's definitely before the BTS. I'll have it. No. He's back. Sorry. <laughs> you know what? It's. Uh, I need to get. I'm gonna have to get the. Uh, I'm going to have to get the uh, the Wi-Fi uh, rigged up hardwired, I think. I'm going to have to run an Ethernet cable because uh, even though now we've got super fast, like, City Fiber broadband, 500, 500, um, City Fiber 500, no less. And uh, I said if I was going to see any more balls of doom or anything, like, lagging or anything like that, I was going to I was gonna hit the roof. And uh, I've decided it's, uh, it's not because we don't have ample... Um, download speed it's just because i'm in the shed and i'm running a, from a booster wi-fi booster from the house so it's pretty good considering but uh i think hardwired is going to be the way forward i think anyway enough of my technical woes <laughs> it's very boring but uh yes here we go well we've got a couple of people lined up to come are we uh i think we might uh so we're going to come back to uh laura because we've got a couple more star questions for you, Laura. So we'll come back to you very, very okay. shortly. Are you all right to hang around for a, for a while, aren't you, Laura? I know you're tired, yeah, but you're all right. Hang around. Got no for plans. Sorry. He's got no plans. Is that is that a normal <laughs> Friday night for you then? Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's probably usually just working. You're probably usually just working on the next newsletter, aren't you? I imagine. <laughs> yeah, something perfectly so, boring uh, like that. Probably. Yeah. There you go. So we've got a couple more guests. So we've got uh, we've got Zoe and we've got Ian Tarantula is going to join us as well. Excellent. So I think we'll just get these guys up, shall we? We've got Zoe. Zoe, are you uh, are you ready to join us? Can we hear you, Zoe? Let's go. Give us a thumbs up, Zoe, if you're ready to join us. There she is. So there we go. We've got Zoe. This is Zoe, hey. one half of hey. Atlantis. Zoe and Rick. Is Rick there? He's not there. He is. He? He's hiding. He's 
hiding. <laughs> hiding. <laughs> oh my you goodness. You see him pop his head out the corner later. Like, hello. Yeah, you know. He, I mean, he's, he's currently Rick. feeding the uh, cinnamantis. So. Rick. Okay, Rick, Rick's been going that's to. That's his excuse. Uh, that's his excuse. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Rick, Rick's been going to the, uh, to the shows. Um, Longer than I have, man. So he's like even more of a veteran. So, uh, so I don't, he he should be here telling us about all his ex exploits and uh, experiences. But never mind, we'll let him off. Well, you'll see both of us tomorrow, won't you? Yes, I'm not tomorrow, Sunday both. even. Sunday, yes, that's right. Yeah, yes, Sunday. So, uh, and we've also got Ian. Ian, give us a thumbs up if you're ready, my friend. Here we go. Here we've got Ian as well. Ian Tarantula, how's it going, matey? Yeah, not too bad. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, very well, man. Very well. Thank you so much to Ian and Zoe for joining us. So, no guys, I know Zoe's going to the uh, show on Sunday. Zoe and Rick will both be there. Uh, Ian, you're not going to this one, are you? No, sadly not, mate. No, no, a bit skint this one. Yeah, mm. that's a shame, man. That's a shame. It's because uh, I know you uh, you do tend to go to the Doncaster shows, don't you? I've been well. I've been once. Uh, I haven't. That's the, the first time. <laughs> it's okay. been, uh, I wasn't uh, sure. It's, it's quite, it's quite a trek seen, away from where I, I knew I'd so. seen you there before. I just wasn't <laughs> sure if like it was yeah. something that you'd done for you know a long time or you've no, been going. No, no, no. I've done. I do a lot of the invert shows and everything. But yeah, the yeah. The, uh, the Doncaster show that was the first one I went to. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and get to another one this year. Uh, yeah, usually, well, a few of us go up and stay over on the Saturday night. Yes, it's a bit of a trek for you, isn't it? So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, about, yeah, yeah, about four hours, three and a half, but, four hours. Uh, but it's well worth the journey, don't you think? I mean, Doncaster show is. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's uh, obviously it's been going longer than most of the other shows. Um, apart, I think it's only BTS. Who's is it? BTS been going longer than the uh, than Doncaster shows. So uh, I mean, Doncaster, yeah. the uh, the IHS as a organisation, obviously has been going since sixty nine, which we said, but. Laura, do you know when they actually started doing the uh, the reptile shows themselves? It must have been a decent while ago because I know we've been at the race course for like yeah. 20 years or something ridiculous. Yeah, you know. um, yeah it will be actually because I think the first one at the race course was the two, 2002, 2003. Yeah. Um, and then they were at the Dome prior to that um, yeah. for a couple of years and then somewhere else. So it, it's a good sort of probably 20, 25 years. I mean, wow, no, that's sure. uh, that's that's a long time. That's so that's that's not as many. That's not as long as the uh, BTS, is it, Ian? Because I think BTS has been. Uh, it's about thirty. It's about thirty-two, thirty-three years now. BTS, um, I'm not, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I yeah. remember exactly uh, yeah. exactly how many it is. I'm pretty certain it's uh, it's 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 getting on for thirty mid thirties now. So uh, mm. wow, I mean that's uh, that's ancient. But then obviously. Doncaster is uh, is is uh, well, it's quite a long way behind, but it's uh, compared to all the others. You know, obviously the invert shows and everything are uh, are mere babies con compared mm. to the uh, <laughs> Doncaster show. So uh, so yeah, but the Doncaster show is uh, is 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 probably only it's probably one of the busiest. I mean, I'm not sure how many people they get through the door. BTS. I mean, they definitely Doncaster definitely busier than the uh, than the invert shows. Yeah, um, yeah. I, mean, I would say. Well, I would say the November one I went to is probably busier than the BTS. Yeah, I. Well, I. I mean, I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't like to say, but I do think that the Doncaster shows, the BTS ones that I've been to, they've they've never been as busy as some of the busiest Doncaster ones that I've. Yeah. I, I've I've done. I mean, when they open up uh, those summer ones, you know, like June, the June yeah, and September June's shows are absolutely mental. Hmm. They're absolutely mental. They're like. You usually have two or sometimes even three floors they'll open up for, uh, for those. How do they make the decision on that, Laura, as to how many floors to open up beforehand? Because obviously some, some shows are busier than others, obviously. Like the April's a new show, obviously, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But, um, but obviously the uh, and the November show is always like not quite as busy as the summer shows. Yeah. June and yeah. the uh, the June and the September show are always absolutely rammed. I mean, you get up to like three thousand people through the door. Those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's easily like three to five thousand people through the door on the on the summer shows, and they're usually the busiest because it just it falls really well for people's um, breeding products hatching and stuff. So there's okay, generally better yeah. selection stuff yeah. like that. So that's why they tend to be busier and. 
it just depends on bookings. Like, obviously, we always have the bottom floor. And then if we have enough people wanting, you know, the book to then warrant booking the, the first floor, yeah. you know, then because obviously we don't we don't want just one, like, three people up there because that'd be awful. Um, so, you know, we tend to wait till we've got a decent amount of, of uh, wait list yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. three lovely it's tables. In the booking form, so I will take the whole floor. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> maybe to shove a couple up there. Like one it? table yeah. for like one snake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have to fill it. You know. Um, and it. I mean, as a as a quick brush on Brexit has made a huge difference as well because yeah we're struggling you know with the European traders now with the laws even even the insect traders yeah. because not it's not like it used to be yeah yeah that had a a big impact on the um the south uh uh, seas Seas. yeah in virtual yeah yeah Yeah. that one is uh you know that one was renowned for all the european dealers that come literally off the 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 channel tunnel and they're pretty Mm. much at the show and obviously there was none this year there's going to be none at the bts either so yeah it's it's totally different yeah 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 it's <laughs> it's difficult because we we do have a couple of european traders coming over who have managed mm. to somehow wrangle the paperwork and 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 whatever else but you know one yeah. of them is a gas snake breeder so it's all right for him it's all one species but when yeah. you're looking at inverts and you've got some poor bloke with like 70 different species the paperwork's just inside yeah. to get yeah. over yeah, they just yeah. don't bother now. Yeah, no, I'm no, like the financial it's... gain from it, you know, over all the all the paperwork hassle is is probably not, you know, feasible, is it? So, no, you know, you're looking no. at cost, time, risk of getting stuck at the at the parts, and yeah, yeah. I think that will make a big difference to the size of the shows this year because hmm. we've gone from, you know, obviously European traders at Donny, there was quite a few, you know, and and that's left space and i think the other downside is they used to bring things that we don't have in the hobby you know yeah. Being that sort of yeah yeah no it's definitely uh i mean as a uh as a supplier as well as a breeder and supplier getting in yeah. getting in uh, things like just things like true spiders and things like that has become yeah. almost mm. impossible now you know it's just uh, it's absolutely uh well it's just all it's just terrible now you can't get you can't get anything in now, nearly all the uh, suppliers that I know, uh, my uh, EU and European contacts, have most of them just don't even bother. Don't even, no, bo- you know, just, they just don't bother it's sending to the UK now because it's just too much hassle. Um, they just decided not to even bother. So, I mean, if that's too much hassle, I can only imagine what the paperwork and the hassle is trying to get all your stock over in order yeah. to, you know, be able yeah. to go to a show. Um, I just uh, I don't even want to think about how difficult that would be. So uh, yeah. so yeah. But luckily, yeah, know. you know, we've got um, we've got we've got plenty of uh, breeders and sellers here in the UK, which uh, which yeah. is uh, more than enough to fill the uh, the uh, Doncaster race course um, over yes. once or twice, I think. So uh, yeah. so I know that uh, I know that they're keen to uh, to get it so that there's. Uh, opening up a little bit more for the reptiles and, uh, you know, the uh, getting back into more of a, because it is obviously a herp show. Um, yeah. And then, because uh, I'm not entirely sure when they did start to uh, allow inverts into into the show. Is it something that they've always done, you know, like, did, did or as it, you know, did it, did it originally, was it just reptiles and nothing else? And then, like, this, people slowly started bringing other things in? Yeah, I think, I don't know when it started with the inverts. I just think, you know, I think for the sense of variety and things like that, you know, we would like a little one. And then, you know, and, and now, you know, obviously we, we made the decision recently to sort of limit how many invert sellers we have. Yeah. Um, but we're still, you know, are allowing a, a decent amount, you know. And when you consider the size of, of Doncaster show, which is, easily 300 tables versus the invert shows which are probably closer to 50 or 60 even if we only allow 50 tables for inverts it's still the same amount yeah 
as an influencer, you know, yeah, and that and that's what we were basing it upon. Yeah, because end of the day, we are it is, we are a herpetology show. So it is a reptile show. There's yeah. a there's a lot more invert shows than they are reptile shows. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, yeah, I mean, we're very lucky, really, that we've got so many mm. uh, so many shows going on, and obviously now with the uh, with the invert shows UK doing them, you know, all <laughs> yeah. around the country, we're actually uh, <laughs> yeah. we're very we're very very lucky. I think I think we're finally sort of catching up with a lot of the uh, European sort of yeah. um, situations because in certain parts, you know, like Germany especially, um, you know, they uh, they have shows like. They have shows all the time, you know. There's shows, yeah. there's shows somewhere like every every other week or something, or you know. In fact, I was speaking to Christoph um, from Tarantula Room um, a oh, while yeah. back, and he was saying, he was saying in Poland, they they now in Poland they have um, they have like shows nearly every week or every other week or so. There's there's shows basically okay. going on all the time, um, you know. In fact, it's getting to the point now where I think a lot of because there's so many shows. Um, yeah. A lot of breeders and sellers don't even bother with like online sales or websites anymore. They just they just make their living from going to shows, you know, sort of thing. Mm. Which uh, which is not something you could really do here because even though, I mean, I don't know how they would do it to be honest. A show every other week. I mean, I'm exhausted oh. just thinking about just thinking about doing a show every week is just yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, well, they, 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 they tried cramming a load of invert shows in to the end of last year, didn't they? So, it's, yes. and that oh. really took its toll. Yeah, oh, I, do, I think I managed to do a couple of those, and I was like, I'd had enough. Like, yeah. I was like, I don't think I've ever been so sick of a show season ever, <laughs> apart from last year's. You know, like, whereas this show, it's like one more or less a month, which is manageable. Yeah. I think one one a month is uh, one a month is just about doable, isn't it? And I think yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at now, isn't it? I think there's one a month. It's yeah. only it's only the these two actually. This one, the last show, and this one. These are the closest ones together. So we have the northern show, um, yes. just like a couple of weeks ago, and now we've got the uh, obviously we've got um, we've got the IHS on Sunday. Um, yeah, and that's cl that's close together. I couldn't do that, you know. I couldn't do that every few weeks doing a show. I don't no. think. Mm. No, I mean, you could, but it, it takes a lot. Oh. Out. It's, it's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. You to, couldn't do it. There's another person. one on Sunday as well, somewhere. An entomology one. Yes, there's the yes. Midlands Entomological Show, Midlands which show, annoyingly yeah. has clashed again. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it happened in November as well. It did, and and we've you know I say we IHS we've had our dates secured for three years now um so we're a bit like it was a bit frustrating because it was like you know the dates have been on the website for three years and we hoped we'd have managed to avoid you know we're trying to do our best obviously to avoid but the ihs one's the same date every year um and it's a shame it's flashed again because i've had yeah. online people are struggling to you know so i mean the plus side is they are only an hour away from each other so some people do actually go to both Mm. Um, but if you're coming from down south and you're already driving to one and then up to Donny, or I think yeah, and then and then all the way back down, it's it's a it's a day. <laughs> you know. It really is, yeah, it really is. So, uh, but yes, uh, I had to make a choice, and uh, yeah, my choice was Doncaster. I think <coughs> it's going to be interesting to see, you know, whether or not. Uh, because I don't really know how busy the April show would be anyway under normal circumstances. Because uh, I think I only did. I mean, the I think Don I think Doncaster actually only started the April show. Um, literally one. They did it once, didn't they? Before and then COVID, COVID. and then COVID yeah. struck. Obviously, everything but got stuck. It so. was a fantastic success. You know, we, yeah. we decided on April because people complained there were too much time between the November one and the June one, and. Yeah. Obviously, that's why we decided on April. It worked quite well for the other shows that go on. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, we we booked we booked that day, and then COVID hit, you know, and we had to sort of what postpone it for two years. So this oh, will be this no. this will only just be the second one. Um, yeah, which I mean, feels insane because it feels like it's always been there. Yeah, it hasn't, yeah. Well, I yeah. I mean, I guess it's just because, like, obviously they've they've been doing three shows a year for so many years. Um, that uh, adding another one just doesn't seem like it just, it's just going to slip in really quietly and no
nobody's really yeah. going to notice. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, there's another yeah. show. And I'm actually absolutely delighted that um, Doncaster are doing another show because, you know, for me, it's uh, the Doncaster shows and the Northern show are like, like you, Laura, there are, uh, there are like in our backyard, so to speak, aren't oh, they? So, yeah. Uh, you know, and it's it's an absolute dream being it not having to go too far, but then obviously all the other invert shows, you know, so Bristol, Bedford, obviously Brighton, Glasgow. Glasgow, you know, I mean they're like they're about as far away from us as they they could be really. So hmm. you know, they're yeah. both they're all yeah. they're all between three and four hour drives for us. So uh yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's a trek, but um, we can't complain because we've got four Doncaster shows and the Northern show. That's five shows <laughs> right on our doorstep, right? So uh, there you go. What is Rick up to? <laughs> he made his appearance. Rick, what He's are you been up trying to sneak friend? in and out? <laughs> What's he doing? He's messing with Brunner's Cinemantis. Um, okay. I'll talk. Your okay. cinematic to be precise. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Oh, that's no uh, that's I've been laughing Rick. at him trying to sneak in. <laughs> yeah, that's our Rick in the background who we just saw there. Rick Schultz. He's a uh, he, he's an old man of the uh, of the of the exotic world, just like myself. He's been around, <laughs> been around forever. And uh, yes, I know Rick's go been going to uh, Doncaster show as well as the other shows for. <clears throat> For as long as, as long as, probably, he's probably been going to the show since it began, I imagine. That's how old he is. <laughs> Don't let me say that. But, uh, you're just in my no, ears. There you go. So, uh, anyway, that's Rick and Zoe, Mantis Atlantis. So, Zoe, you, mm -hmm. um, you're a relatively, uh, a relative newcomer to the whole uh, exotic world. And I know that you uh, went to Doncaster, I think, for the first time last year, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, was it November. Or November you went there for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. How did you find it? What do you think? Really busy. I was like, really busy. Because <laughs> I'd been to Bedford, the show, the invert show in Bedford, and obviously that was busy. But as soon as I went to Doncaster, I was like, no, yeah. this is much yeah. busier. <laughs> this is what the, busy uh, looks like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. The invert shows are, are, are fantastic, obviously, but um, compared to uh, compared to Doncaster, when Doncaster's on a, on a busy day, there's you know, there's oh, no definitely. There's no, there's no comparison really. So, uh, no comparison at all. And and that's no. that's another reason why I feel like we're so lucky because uh, we have that Doncaster show on our doorstep, and um, and it's just so busy. It's an absolute, uh, yeah. it's just an absolute privilege to be there as a as a trader, really. But I tell you what, I absolutely miss. I do miss wandering around the show, talking to some of the other... Because at, at Doncaster, you see, there's a few traders who I got to know over the years, years ago, before the Invert show started. Um, and um, I don't get to see them now, really, because I don't get a chance to go and walk around. And uh, and I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll appreciate this as well, Laura, since you started uh, being a trader as well. Um, yeah, you just kind of miss, don't you? You don't get to go and have a wander around as much, or you know. Sometimes I don't get to leave my 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 tables at all for the whole day. Same. I don't and think I, you did leave last time. <laughs> and I, I end, yeah, exactly. And I, and and also, I for that. even if I stay at the table, um, sometimes if it's so busy, I don't even get a chance to have a natter when people come to see me. Yeah. I don't get a chance to have a natter, you know. Mm. Um, you know, it's like I met Zoe for the first time ever last year, and I really wanted to have a good chat and catch up and stuff. And uh, <laughs> I think I managed to, I think I managed to get out a few sentences, and then it was just, yeah, like, that was oh, it. <laughs> I just got to go and do this, or I got to go and do that, you know. And it's, uh, it's great to be busy, but I really miss, I really miss not being able to like have a good natter and a chin wag with some of the, some of the other traders at the Doncaster show who obviously don't do the invert shows, you know, because they're either. They're either reptile people, or you know, or they're selling something that they—that's just—they just don't go to the invert shows for whatever reason. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, so yeah, I do which miss that. Um, so we've which got show was it where we went, yeah. um, and we were just we was was the one where we didn't trade. Was it last end of last year when we were all chatting? Yes. Oh, what Midland show, wasn't it? it was How Midland lovely show. was that though? Yeah. How nice was that? <laughs> you it know, really it's actually. Was. 
and I think uh, I think I think I made a I made an executive decision last year that uh, I was going to uh, I was going to use the uh, MEF show the December show yes. as my my show of the year that I'm just going to go and uh, catch up with people and have a good chat and uh, and not be a trader you know sort of thing so uh, yeah because you know it's end of the year it's December the M- yeah. that MEF show is is relatively quiet anyway you know it's uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's it's a nice little show, and it's a nice little show exactly. So, uh, yeah, you know they've uh, they've got a nice mixture, haven't they, of like uh, pinned and yeah. dry stuff, and uh, and obviously livestock as well. I mean, there's more and more livestock being sold there now. Uh, but, yeah, uh, but yeah, I sometimes feel like they could do with. I mean, I know it's a classic uh, place. They've been doing Dukesbury for for a lot of years now. Uh, yeah, but uh, I feel like uh, they could benefit from having a slightly larger venue to be honest so uh, potentially yeah yeah as now they've got more live sellers i think you know when it was just sort of solely pinned and stuff or, or more aimed towards i think now they've got more live sellers it, it probably wouldn't wouldn't harm them to get a yeah you know sort yeah of a larger location. yeah it's uh i don't suggest it to warren though because you never know what he's going to say you probably explode no <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Warren's a great guy, but uh, you know, woe betides if you like question question anything he's doing with the show. I have made that mistake. <laughs> so I'm out. Warren, Warren's, Warren's a lovely guy, and I would I I I would not want to uh, assume anything when it comes to organising and setting up your own show because I can only imagine the headache that goes into uh, trying to get everything sorted out. You know. Um, starting with the venue, obviously, and then you know, and then yeah. all the insurance, all the insurance purposes, health and safety, yeah. you know, just yeah, sounds but... like a total nightmare to me. And I just, uh, I just don't know if I could be bothered to uh, to put myself through that. But you never know. <laughs> Bad enough as a trader. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, know. I know exactly. So, uh, so yeah, um, so yeah. Speaking of traders, Zoe, you were. Uh, not obviously you're not going to be at Doncaster trading are you you're you're trading at Bedford are you next is that that going to be your oh I I don't know, don't know. <laughs> I mean we have got quite a bit of stuff at the minute but she's looking at she's looking at Rick there. she's looking at Rick for compliments yeah. no, Rick, give me the nod yeah, I'm, looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at how much stuff he's brought yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so people who don't know Zoe and Rick, they are they are they are co-owners of uh, Mantis Atlantis, and uh, they are they are very cool. I mean, I've known Rick a lot, 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 too many years, and uh, Zoe obviously uh, I've known for a, a good couple of years now, and uh, they are great together, and they are breeding some absolutely amazing stuff. These guys are uh, are, are breeding some uh, really unique exotic stuff. I know Rick and Zoe are working hard to bring us some of those species that have not been around very often, or they they keep You've coming. You've got this through. one, Mitch. Pardon? You've got this one. That is Corydodus, right? Yep. You've got the uh, yes. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got mine are, mine are coming through quite nicely. I've got. Um, I've got the Corydodis Starly, or at least I think it's Starly, and uh, they are, yeah, they're about fourth in star now. They're coming through quite nice. I've, uh, yeah. I've not done any updates on them or anything. I'm, I'm kind of keeping them under my hat just until they get a little bit older. But uh, yeah, I've got those in Asiodotis. So uh, yeah, that's about this as exciting. being very moody me these days. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. Getting all the fancy stuff to you guys now. You know, I've done. I've done my time for a no bit. No pressure or anything. I'm having a break from. <laughs> I'm having a break from spending ridiculous amounts of money on trying to like breed really exotic animals you know it's uh, <laughs> i've done with that for a bit i'm, I'm having it i've stepped back i'm gonna let you young pups uh, get into all that for a bit so uh, so yeah but it'd be great i bet you're looking at i bet you're excited about uh, the opportunity to trade uh, to show this year i hope to, i hope you managed to uh, pull that one off at some point this year anyway that would be good we shall see we, we shall, shall see. see. Keeping it, keeping it under her hat, man. She's being very cagey about all that. So, uh, well, so I don't yeah, know what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and obviously, Jeremy, you'll be, uh, you'll probably be trading. Uh, maybe, maybe not this year. Maybe next year. This year, actually, I was going to say year. I was just waiting for the opportunity. Wow. Bedford, I booked two tables. Oh, have you really? Yeah. That's oh. it. So it's going to be exciting. 
I don't know if you know Ben, Ben, Ben's pets. I do, yeah. Well, I don't know him, but I know, I know, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so me and him are just doing the table together um, under my name, uh, just Jeremy's Wild World. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. I can't wait. I've already got a lot of stuff that I'm growing up at the moment. Yeah. So I think it's going to well. There you go. A nice there you experience, go. You, you are, dude. It'll be a nice experience for him, though. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely for sure. Amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm so jealous of you guys. It's like I was, we were speaking to Francis and Ebbs um, in the pre-show and at the show at the Northern... Um, Northern show and that was their first show and they were super excited and I was so excited for them as well you know just just that um, knowing that they've never done it before and trying to remember like uh, you know when I did my first show and the anticipation and the excitement and and nervous as well feeling quite nervous about it you know but um, but on the day you know you're just so busy you just don't you just don't, don't think, think about it. Think you don't about think it. anymore. You just go for it. Yeah, yeah, you're just you're just on autopilot. So again, I'll say to you what I said to uh, Francis and Evans, dude. I'm so I'm so jealous for you, but I'm excited <laughs> as well. So here you hear it for first. There you go. We've got Jeremy's Wild World, Jeremy and Ben doing their first show at Bedford. So if you love Jeremy, which I know everybody does, <laughs> and you want to go and see him in person, he will be at Bedford doing his first ever show. I'm stoked for you, man. I'm really excited for you. That's going to be Thank you. It's really exciting because I've, I've always been helping out Tony at his stall and getting that experience has been quite quite unique. It's been, you know, it's like, oh, I want to walk around. But I was like, oh, I've got to look after the millipedes and keep talking to people <laughs> sell the millipedes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So it would be like, it will be quite different running my own stall and seeing how it all goes and everything. Yeah. But hey, I get the excuse to talk to people while selling bugs. So it's it's a win. This is what I was saying, man. This is what I was saying before. One of the one of the things that you will love the absolute most, because I know we're all here because we share a passion for exotics, uh, breeding, selling, keeping, hobbyists. We're hobbyists alike, you know, at heart, we're all hobbyists. And this is what we are most passionate about, talking about these things. And to go, and Ian will, Ian will know about this, you go to a show and you spend the whole day just talking about exotic pets inverts whatever your bag you know you you speak to so many different people about so many different things about <coughs> breeding and everything else and it just makes you know you just don't get many opportunities like that do you really where you go to a place and there's absolutely thousands of like-minded people all talking about how excited they are about their next invert what they're going to buy and this that yeah. and the other and yeah. uh, it's an absolutely unbelievable day out, and I, you know I absolutely love them. So definitely, yeah, yeah. and it's it's always good, like when um you speak to people in a lot of the groups, and then you actually meet them, you know, because they person, live so far yeah. away, you know. So so you actually see people that you talk to online a lot, and it's yeah, yeah, it's just it just yeah, it's just a brilliant day, it you know. Can, it can really make your day, you know, when yeah. like you bump when somebody comes over to you and they're like, you know, oh, you so and so this speaking is just really good and then see them for ever you know it's just uh that can memories like that you know that you just take take away with you and they they just burn into your memory and they just make it the experience that it is you know the shows are they're just absolutely amazing so uh, yeah no. so yeah um you'll uh you'll uh you'll i think the one of the best things i love as well is uh is just speaking to the uh to when you're behind the table, Jeremy, when you're on this side of the table, it's that unique experience because people are coming to you. They want to know about your inverts or whatever it is you're selling and they're asking you questions and they want to know. And you do repeat yourself a lot throughout the day. But you know what? Every single interaction, even if even if 10 different people ask you the same question, you'll probably give a slightly different answer. In it, you'll you'll say the same answer, but you'll say it in a slightly like different word way. Word differently, yeah. Yeah, mm. and, and that and that kind of <clears throat> it kind of helps you sometimes as well because sometimes it gets you to think about things in a slightly different way because you almost want to be creative about the way that you answer the question. So it gets you thinking about the same thing that you probably thought about or take for granted so many times, and you say it so many times. And then you suddenly realise that there's something else about like, what you've just been saying that actually I've just learnt something myself just because I've not thought about it in that way for so long, you know. And uh, mm. it's just having other people as well, you know, asking you these questions and then you've got the kids 
you know, the kids with their parents. And it's just an absolutely fantastic day, you know, seeing the excitement on the little kids' faces when they're, you know, they want to see your inverts and stuff like that. It's just, uh, it's just absolutely brilliant. So, but, it's uh, just like at seas, like the, early this year, it's like one thing I remember is like um, Spider Shot was setting up their table because I got in early because I was helping out Tony. And uh, I saw that they put out, they brought out the Huntsman box because Lee messaged me ahead of time. He's like, oh, we just had our Malaysian import. We got a bunch of Huntsman. I was like, I want to breed Huntsman. So uh, are you bringing any females? He was like, yes, we're bringing some, some that grab it. So I, when I saw the box on the floor, like I just ran over to it. I was just like, Dude. <laughs> they had well, to be the stand. I was like, just moving these cups out the way. I was like, oh yeah, take that one, take that one. And then I just had these people come up to me and they were like, oh like what are you looking at i was like oh yeah this is david bowie i'm looking for a female oh can you sex one for me and i was just like i was pretty sure i spent like i only had like an hour to go around the whole place and i'm pretty sure i spent like 25 minutes explaining to people <laughs> it's yeah. like oh this is how you can sex them and i'm not 100 yeah. but this is how you can sex yeah. them it's like oh this one would be good for a beginner oh I'm, I'm, and she was yeah. like Oh, would you? What would you recommend as a beginner huntsman? And I was like, oh, have you kept old worlds and pokies because they can be a bit bolty? It's like, oh yeah, I've kept pokies. So I was like, oh, you should definitely go for the Giovanna then because they're a little yeah. smaller. And then it's just stuff like that. It's like I yeah. never thought like I'd explain. I was just here digging through a box. I didn't think I was gonna. It's like three or four different people just come up to me, just tap me on the shoulder. I was like, oh, do, do you know if this one's a good start? I, was like, I don't work here, but I'll have anyways. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. People just want to know all those little all those little details, you know. How do you sex this? Can you do this? What's the best way to keep that? Is this good for a starter? Is this a more experienced level thing, you know? Yeah. And uh, you're gonna get questions from right, left, and pulling you in all directions. And then you're gonna it's gonna be an absolute buzz. And then you go home and you're just completely exhausted because yeah. mentally, <laughs> you know, <laughs> every show I'm just like, I want to hibernate. Exactly. <laughs> you've been speaking, you've been speaking nonstop for the whole day, you know, and it's yeah. uh, you get home and but you're just so elated, you're just so you're buzzing so much because you know you've you've just been speaking like about things that you feel the most passion for, you know. So uh, mm. it's absolutely fantastic. I assume it's the same for you as well, Laura, because you were, uh, you know, obviously you you're coming at it from a slightly different perspective than us. You've got the uh, you've got obviously the taxidermy stuff going on. Um, mm -hmm. Do you uh, do you get people asking you um, any specific questions? Any kind of any odd questions? Do people ask you anything? Anything what you might consider to be? I, I guess you've heard it all, right? Did you kill it? Did you kill them? Did you kill them? Like, How do you source on my them? <laughs> Literally on my t-shirt. I'm just gonna change the did you kill it? No. Because <laughs> that must be like Yeah, no, I didn't kill it. <laughs> don't ask, just have your business card just on the back of the business card. I did not kill these. <laughs> yeah, that's like not a bad shout. Just like here you go. Here's an FAQ. And it literally just says, Did you kill it? Um yeah, I get asked that a lot. Um, to be honest, I spend most of the time talking about the pet taxidermy stuff. Um, people ask like really specific questions about butterflies, and I'm like, oh god, now you're really testing me, you know? Um, yeah. Like they'll ask me like really like specific things about where certain things come from, and I'm like, oh god, this is where I have to pretend like I know what I'm talking about for once. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard because I guess my uh, my idea of what's weird has been somewhat skewed now. I mean, I get asked like, "What's the weirdest thing you taxidermied?" and and like um, sort of bits and bobs like that. But it's it's yeah. mostly just about like the commission stuff that I end up talking about a lot. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then just yeah. pinning in like, people ask about how are you pinning insects and you know do yeah. they do they do they preserve on their own do you need you know do you need to do certain yeah, things yeah. Or something? well i think i imagine because i think a lot of people fancy fancy their chances at having a go i know so many people i see so many posts yeah. where people are like you know how do you do this is i really want to have a go at pinning this or i really want to have a go at you know i think everybody at some point goes through a little goes through a little kind of time in their minds where they they think they want to have a go. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people do have a go, but I imagine um, yeah. once people start, they realise it's not quite as... It's uh, not for them. It's mm. not quite as straightforward you, as what... Uh, you have videos on your YouTube as well, don't you? Showing... I do. I, I have like a, a 
proper walkthrough video that I've not looked back at in a long time because I hate the sound of my own voice. But um, I have that, and I have like time lapses and 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 stuff like that. Um, I think for me, like I will, I'll always try and like, especially at the shows, I'll always happily talk to people. And I think sometimes it comes across the wrong way when I say like it's not as easy as I make it sound or or it looks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. I've I've yeah. been doing it. You know, for me, yeah. Now pin and pin and like is easy. Tarantulas take me um considerably less time than what they used to. But mm. obviously I started somewhere, you know, and my first yeah. tarantulas were like forever to do. Um yeah. you know, and I th- I think sometimes people don't believe me and then they have a go themselves and I'll talk to them at another show and they'll be like, Hey, you know what, you're actually yeah, I can right. do that. It looks like, easy enough. Yeah, like, stick oh some pins in a board. Just. Yeah. I bet you were. Uh, I, I bet. I bet you were. Uh, don't. I. I know you said that you love to uh, talk shop and you love to uh, give people, you know, advice and help uh, regarding that. But I bet there are some little tricks that you've developed yourself that you keep to yourself because obviously you don't know who's watching. You know, there's other. It's other taxidermists out there, obviously. <laughs> and uh, you know, do you all? I bet you've got your own little kind of little techniques that you've developed yourself that you kind of just keep to yourself a little bit, you know. Just, yeah, just <laughs> there's definitely things, that, things you do. that don't divulge. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just, no, I can just, imagine. I know. I will say to be like, I'm not, I'm not being horrible, you know. Like it's just there's certain <laughs> things that, like, over the years, I. Yeah figured out or you know I yeah. think the tarantula well, one's quite a big one you know yeah. and as much as I want to help people it's taking you time you know, to get to where you are yeah yeah and it's my job you know yeah. it's, yeah. it's no, yeah. you don't want to be giving away your secrets do you I think, it, I think it's yeah. perfect I think it's perfectly understandable everybody every mm. every right-minded person appreciates that um, you know this is your thing and uh, you know there's certain techniques and you know ways of doing things that you've developed painstakingly over the years you know experiments that have gone wrong or worked and you know you've developed these things so uh, of course you're not gonna you're not gonna divulge everything and uh, and so you shouldn't so uh, so yeah but anyway more importantly how many freezers of dead stuff have you got in your house now? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, does the work chest freezer um the work which is, chest freezer. <laughs> yeah which is constantly full um yeah. Christoph, speaking of transfer room, lovingly dropped off all the ones he's been saving up, and I was like, oh, "All in one batch." Um, so that was fun, um, yeah. but it, it seems to have overflowed into my house freezer now. So, um, <laughs> oh my yeah, goodness! That, <laughs> I was like, you know, work freezer, food, house freezer. Who needs food? Yeah. Li- yeah, literally, there's no freezer in my, there's no human food in my freezer. It's um, <laughs> Dead animals. <laughs> so I usually say to people, don't go in the freezer if you're coming around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I put the freezer yeah. trying to grab like an ice cream. Yeah. Or something. Oh, what a bloody hell! It's a tragedy, you freezer. Um, <laughs> there is um, there is mint cornettos in the top drawer. Um, you might just have to like around. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get a butterfly or two out of the way to get to get to the yeah. cornettos. Yeah. Get there eventually. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So, uh, do you uh, obviously taking things slightly seriously now? Do you have a backup power supply for your freezers? Because, on a you know, it's uh, I mean, you know, if the power goes out or whatever, and you lose, you know, is how how drastic is it that if you if the freezer goes off and everything, if everything defrosts, is that is yeah. that gone then? You know, all that is all that. I assume all that stuff is is it ruined or can you just refreeze it? it I suppose it depends. Yeah, it depends what it is. Because, like, yeah. I mean, inside the chest freezer is, if worst case scenario, there was a power cut, because it's so compacted and it, it it's outside as well, it would take such a long time for everything to defrost. I'd have easily yeah. a day before I'd start to encounter problems. Yeah, yeah. Then, if worst case, it's still unsorted in a day, which would be quite rare. Most stuff, like the insects would be fine, just mm. refreeze them won't be a problem but like the wet specimen stuff and the the taxidermy stuff you know you don't want rotting dead animals and you don't want to refreeze yeah. them it's not oh, ideal exactly exactly um, so that, that would be a case of, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> it wouldn't be great, let's put it that way. No, um, no. I can't imagine it's like nice at the at the best of times either, is it? Though? <laughs> I, it's quite worrying because the smell isn't as strong to me anymore. So like yeah. I can be like skiing in a dead animal, don't smell a thing. And then like a friend of my room and they're like, that absolutely stinks. And I'm like, I'm yeah. a little bit concerned. Yeah. I can't yeah. tell that. I, you I, get used I to totally the smell. get it. I was a bigger for 13 years. Yeah. So then I I'm always used to the smells. House. Yeah, I'm, I'm always stressed that my house smells like dead insects or something, though, because <laughs> like, how would I know? <laughs> So I pinned a couple things, and it's like, oh, I got the insects. They're not too bad. I thought that until I pinned one of my pandanus, yeah. and my God, yeah. that was horrible. It just stunk my room up. And I was yeah. like, you know what? You're going in the garage. I'm just keeping you in there until you yeah. get rid of the smell. <laughs> it's been in there for about a month, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to smell that again. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I smelled the tarantula's abdomen when I emptied it. Oh, it's nasty. And, and some of the worst, <laughs> you know, and I, I've done stermies you know, adult sperm is, um, that is, if, if the look of it doesn't make you want to throw up, the smell probably won't be far off. Um, so nasty. <laughs> yeah. Mm. No, I did, you know, it's weird. And I've looked into this previously because some don't smell, like, that bad. And I think it does kind of come down to what they get fed, in a lot of ways. Because I've noticed things that get fed more crickets do tend to smell more than like if mm. they have a diet of locusts or worms crickets um, again like yeah stink. They, stink. <laughs> they stink horrible things <laughs> they, just, they just cause they problems, problems for everybody all the time <laughs> i like yeah. the black crickets they're okay yeah yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah and I, I always know if a mantis has eaten recently before dying that's always a fun one right um, yeah that's the smell I must admit, I've got mantis in my freezer that I was meant to send off, and I never did. So there's probably a few in there that yeah. I've uh, yeah. forgotten about. I, uh, I'm the same. I've, uh, I've got, I've got quite a few mantis and various other things in in my freezer. Don't tell the missus because uh, she don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a time stamp. Like, hey, check this out. <laughs> Stuff I, I had a pre warm mine just in case, you know, she opens the tub and sees a giant fucking okay, pokey <laughs> sticking out the tub, like, what is that? <laughs> it's, but, uh... it's funny when people post me, obviously the tranches or, or mantids or whatever that they've had in the freezer, they'll often be stuffed for it on the tub, which is, which is genuinely some of the funniest things I've ever read. Stuff like, don't open dead tranches inside. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm, I don't know if I'd be more concerned if there was a live one inside. It's been in the freezer. Um, although I have had ones that have said live on the front, and I'm like, have I ordered anything? Because you know, usually I just like start opening tub because I always yeah. expect everything to be dead. Mm. So like, you know, I have to try and remember if I've ordered anything live because otherwise, they'll be just like straight chucking my hand in, and you know. Guess what oh, I've just noticed, Mitch. Ooh, what you got there? <laughs> you got a hatch. Yeah. Ooh, Are they orchids? Just noticed it now. Out. Orchids, yeah. Are they orchids? Ooh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, orchids. Cool, cool. You never get sick of seeing an orchid. Red ninjas. Oh no. Kung Fu Mantis says. Kung Fu Mantis. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I've been around that for a while. Seeing a uh, seeing an orchid hatch is uh, is just I just never get bored of it. You know, it's no. like I've been. No, it's a species been, I'll always keep. I don't even know how many years I've been breeding orchids now consistently, and uh, every time I get a hatch, I still get really excited by it. It's just one of those things, you know. I think it's because they're like just that really vibrant red shiny red and black kind of appearance that no other mantis species oh, has that just... such a deep red kind of look so hmm. what we're looking at there she did that last night oh another oh yeah nice nice i shouldn't show you that that's my little secret to get in orchids today <laughs> every time it's foolproof of a nit hit oh, failed. Okay. if you see them going around so we have been putting i've been putting orchids on <laughs> 
knife plants for donkey's years, man. Don't come around here with your secrets, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Everybody always seems to struggle for some reason. Um, yeah, no. It's, uh, I was telling it's, it's, stick them on the live plant. Yeah, that's one of the, it's that's one of the tips that it's always on the list of tips that I go through when I when I uh, when people ask me how they can get their orchids to lay. It's you know putting them on a live plant. Definitely one of them. It's right up there with one of the uh, one of the things that you could do. So uh, yeah, definitely. Oh well, nice one anyway. Because as you know, like orchids, you know they can be fifty fifty whether or not they lay or not. They uh, they're a bit hit and miss sometimes. So. They are one that can be yeah hit and miss. So, and the yeah. other one that I had struggle with recently was rhombodera. They are yeah. really difficult. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. Uh, let's just have a quick look. So if anybody have we got any questions for anybody on here? We don't just uh, obviously Laura's answering a lot of questions, but if anybody's got any questions for Jeremy, Zoe, Gavla, obviously is here, and uh, Ian as well. If anybody in the chat has got any questions for anybody, please feel free to post them. I do have quite a lot of starred uh, things going on here. Uh, I will actually, yes. I uh, and and funnily, you should say that I actually just recently had another egg sack hatch of uh, of jumpers, Ooh. and uh, yeah, so P Regis, I just had an egg sack hatch, um, about a week or so, maybe 10 days. So they're not going to be ready for a while yet, though. I do not like to send out the jumpers till they've motored at least two, maybe three times. I won't sell them on until they're a good. <coughs> Till they're a good four to five millimeters, so they need to molt a couple of times. So it's probably going to be quite a few weeks before I have any available. Um, but there might be somebody in the chat. Obviously, Claire is around. Um, Claire might have something. Um, uh, um, uh, Aruna Exotics. Um, so if you're still in the uh, if you're still in the chat, Claire, there's a couple of there's uh, Scott is interested in some jumpers. I don't know if you've got anything available. So uh, yeah, and anybody Kelly's else? Kelly's taking some there. as well. Pardon, sorry? I think Kelly's taking some as well, as far as oh, yeah. Kelly, uh, Kelly, yeah, Kelly Jeffries, yes. No, the oh, that, Kelly two Kellys at Doncaster. Yeah, you mean Kelly uh, oh, no, that's the first one you said. They were the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Jeffries at Mantis Mayhem. There's she too many the, Kellys. Uh, she often <laughs> takes uh, she often takes jumping spiders, so uh Mantis Mayhem might have some jumping spiders. Kelly's usually got some uh, got some jumping spiders there, but there'll definitely be a couple of uh, jumping spider people there. Um, who's the uh, who's the spider uh, shop? Did they go in the spider shop spoons? this year? Yeah, the yeah, spider spoons. shop are going. They should have some. Like, uh, spider, shop have some uh, spider shop will have some. Spider shop will have some jumping spiders. Um, and, I think there's uh, one called Spoodernest. Spoodernest. Yeah. They'll have some yeah. uh, jumping mm -hmm. spiders definitely. Yeah. So uh, they will be. Definitely be people there, Scott. If you're uh, if you're thinking about um, being at the show and uh, picking up some jumping spiders, there'll definitely be a few yeah, people. Somebody else for asking as well. So Courtney, yeah, I keep forgetting uh, I've got white Bahamas. Yeah, you Courtney. Bahamas, uh, so we just said Spooder Nest. I think is going to be there, and Spider Shop will probably have some. Kelly also at uh, Mantis Mayo. She'll be there. She probably might have some jumping spiders. Um, so uh, yeah, they'll all be there, and uh, there might be a few other people there as well. So uh, so yeah, it's always good. There's always people, a few people with jumping spiders at the shows. Um, so uh, so yeah, just order Hylas Diardi, Plexus Peter Sai. Ooh, Plexus Peter Sai. I haven't seen those for a little while. Where are you getting them from, Scott? So that'll be interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I love that species. Yeah. Lovely little species. Um, I've had those for a while. I wonder if I can get my jumping spider out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, Zoe. <laughs> so, uh, She's so, big yeah. enough. Gigantius <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Jumping Spider Web. There you go. So, uh, okay. Let's see. Has anybody else got any questions for anybody? So, I think that's. Uh, I think somebody asked. Uh, oh, yeah, I thought somebody asked about BTS. <coughs> I think I'm now. 
Yeah, I still need to. Uh, I still need to. I've actually just recently realised that um, I'm I'm booked in for BTS, but I'm not. I'm not actually going, unfortunately. So. Oh, I can uh, grab your table. I've only got one table booked, and I want two because uh, I've got. I've got, I've, got, I've got three. I've got three. If you oh, want them. Okay. They're oh, they're they're okay. rolled over. I mean, I'm. I actually have four. I take four tables now at, at shows, but. Um, I'm having to make do with three at the BTS and the first to these first two Doncaster shows. I've only got three because they're rolled over from pre-COVID. And that's my problem. Yeah, yeah. so I only had one book back when I only had one table, which was, you know, weird. Um, and obviously it's rolled over from so long. I've managed to like the invert shows and obviously Donny. Um, yeah. To have two or three, but... Um, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I need to. Uh, I need to contact. Um, I need. I need to get in touch about the BTS. Uh, I need to contact Ray and, uh, and tell yeah. him that I, uh, I'm dreading it really because I didn't realise that they they were going to be rolled up. I didn't realise it was an opt out rather than an opt in. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was an automatic thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 didn't, I didn't realise, and I only I only noticed that I was actually booked in. Um, when I, I just I was just looking at the traders list the other day, just out of curiosity to see who was going, and uh, and I, I realised I was going, and uh, I thought, oh, I'm actually not going. So uh, it's uh, it's the same day as uh, as Becky's uh, 40th birthday. So uh, oh, she's not happy. So, so obviously uh, that takes priority. So uh, you know, apparently that's apparently it's good form to. Uh, to go out with your partner on her fortieth birthday rather than do a bug show. So <laughs> Yeah, that's why I missed the uh Barnsley <laughs> show in March. So uh so I need to so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do uh, if Laura, if you were uh, if you're wanting an extra table, I will say when I say to Ray, because um, I'm sure he'll have no problem spilling my tables anyway. Um no. obviously because there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of traders um who have not quite made the cut, you know what I mean? Didn't get in on time and yeah. stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'll just mention cool. to him that uh, that you you're you're looking for an extra table sort of thing. So yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah. So like I say, I'll, the only reason I'm doing that is not because <laughs> not because I think that rail struggle to find somebody to fill my tables. No. It's just no. more of a case of uh, you want another table. So uh, I'll suggest you that. You out of it. Yeah. So I'll uh, I'll suggest that to him. So uh, I was hoping Gab was going to. Uh, was going to get a driver and, and head down there for me, but um, it's not happening, so uh, I'm, I'm going to have to cancel. <laughs> it's, it's a shame we couldn't fit both of our stock in one car because obviously then I could drive. But, um, yeah, yeah. You, you have a lot of stock, and I can't drive two cars, so. Oh my God. You can't. Oh, so cute. There we go. There we go. That's a, uh, is that a, uh, is that a female P. Regis? Yeah, White Bahamas. Yeah. So jealous. <laughs> Beautiful. Ah, uh, look at her. She's How can you guys not like these? Ah, uh, beautiful. It is too cute. She's going to jump off in a minute. They're so fluffy. Uh, I'm like terrified. <laughs> I've got one Regis at the moment from my own breeding, which is a high orange, but nothing beats the white Bahamas. They're so cute. These guys got me <laughs> over my fear, but I keep debating whether to dip into tarantulas, but I am still not 100% sure. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Off. The sea elegans are, are beautiful and they've got little love heart shaped sparkles on the butts. Yeah. Two. Once you get one tarantula, you can never stick with one. I was like, oh yeah, I'll get one tarantula. That was my Nandu. And now I've got like, what, 50? <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that, Zoe. Is... Beautiful. Is I didn't she, think that uh... was going to work, actually. That was trial and error. No, that was good. That was good. <laughs> we uh, it, fo it focused really nicely. So uh, that was mm. good. So yeah, nice one. Is she uh, on the old iPhone trick? It, she looked a bit. Uh, is, she, is she just? Is she maybe pre sub adult, or is she not really sure? Um, what? yeah, she's getting there. She's, I don't um, think not she's long not, molted again. Yeah, I don't think she's adult just yet. She looked like she might be sub adult. No, so. she's not big enough to be adult. Yeah. I've got a male for her as well, but male's a bit behind her. I'll be completely honest. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, that's all right because females can live, you know, females will live for some females can live up to a year and a half to two years as adults, so uh, they're really good. So you've got plenty of time, but um, but let oh, me yeah. know, let me know because I've got I've got a couple of I've got some males coming through and I'm not sure whether or not they uh, 
I'll have any females ready for them. They might mature a little bit quicker. Than my I'll female. send it to you. It's a whole so, yeah, just, game. Just, just yeah, keep <laughs> keep keep me posted. So yeah, that'll be good. I will do. <laughs> so uh, so Laura, um, do you? Uh, I know you do a lot of commissions, obviously, for your uh, for your stuff. Um, do you yep. get many commissions pre-show? Like people come and collect at shows. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky to um, to time like the pet stuff, but like the frames and stuff. I mean, I'm taking I think it must be like four or five bags worth of just pre-sold stuff this time, which is nice and handy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's true. A lot of people like to just sort of see, you know, when I get there and stuff. But um, what tends to happen most at shows is people actually giving me things. Um, I think there's about. <laughs> you go me more than you went. <laughs> yeah, I have to take a poly box every time yeah. because, like, people, you know, it's a bit weird when someone's like, "Here's a dead tarantula." Um, but Donnie's even worse for it because, like, I get reptiles as well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I tend to actually, yeah, take take probably more. <laughs> do you take uh, so? Do you just take a box, or do you take like a box with like? Does it have dry ice in it, or something like that? Yeah, I have, well, I do the um the like diff. Well, I I end up with like a ton of like freezer bags and stuff from like yeah. what people send to me. Yeah. So I refreeze them and then just bring a box just to yeah. just keeps everything up. You know, stops it. Donnie can yeah, be warm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh... Um, so we all take we all take um, we all take uh, beer cans in our uh, freezer boxes, and you take uh, yeah. you take tarantulas and. Uh... <laughs> Don't get them mixed up. You might, you know. Do you uh, do you ever get yeah. do, you, do you ever get like? Because I imagine a lot of people will say tell you beforehand that they're bringing dead yeah. stuff to yeah. you, but do you get like people who have not told you that they're bringing stuff coming up and saying, "I've got this." Can you do me something with this? Then you <laughs> Take it. Mirror. And then but the problem is it's like half rotted and you have to like say, dude, that's just like, that. <laughs> take it away. Yeah. I mean, thankfully nothing's come half rotted, but it does happen Not where somebody's nice. like, oh, I saw you were coming. I brought it instead of posting. Here you go. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, <laughs> you put your name on it because I'll forget. <laughs> and at least send me a message. You no, know, it's just like I uh, I found this outside. Is any good to you? Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just squish squirrels. Um, you that's roadkill. Just like here, you have this. Speaking of squirrels, <laughs> Lee, uh, Spider Shop Lee, one of the shows messaged me saying, "I found a dead squirrel. Do you want it in the car park?" And I'm like, "Yes, obviously." <laughs> and he left it under my table for me for when I arrived. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Did he tell you put it there? Got the screenshot message from Lee being like, I found you a dead squirrel in the car park. I picked it up and put it in a poo box for you. As long as they didn't have the um, oh, squirrel pox, you're all good. Wander off to the toilet, just come yeah. back to see a dead squirrel. Just <laughs> he sent me a photo of it just next to the leg of the table. And I'm like, <laughs> people were really quite concerned of this dead squirrel on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I hope it won't run. He never disappoints yeah. in us, does he? I love it. He always did something. I <laughs> and, uh, this is the worst. I think the worst thing is that it, I didn't even flinch it coming from Lee. I was just like, "All right, yeah, cool." Like you know, it wasn't a it's surprise. More like I'm not surprised you did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, when if I still have the photo? It was it was quite comical. I'll be honest. That was I think that was the Northern show potentially. Oh, yeah, Northerners. Right. Oh my god, bound to have been a Northerner. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. I mean, I've been brought live animals before, but never a dead one. Yeah, I've brought it sort of under the table it's as well, but I don't think I do. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep an eye on I've had people turn up to my dog with live hedgehogs. Yeah. No, let it go. It's a hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, that's very good. Oh my God. That was too funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. Five minutes to eat for hedgehogs. 
Yeah. <laughs> they are. They were injured head like trauma. It's because I did a um, degree in wildlife rehab, so some people find that out and decide they can just bring me their animals. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Not the best. <laughs> oh my god yeah you probably see quite a lot of roadkill don't you uh zoe because you're in a uh you're a, you're in a lovely part of the world aren't you are, are you uh are you, are you do you live lake right district in, lake district right yeah so uh not yeah. jealous at all about that but um i mean i've uh, seen my fair share of dead badgers i imagine so yeah so uh but, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a regular occurrence and pheasants oh my god pheasants get everywhere oh, oh. yeah Pheasants are so stupid, though. It's like, yeah. like one of the roads oh, yeah, I drive past. Where they wait, I swear they wait on side at road. It's like Reddit account. <laughs> yeah. Deer are the worst as well because they obviously just freeze. They like have um, yeah. the moment where they just can't move, and then that's how they get mm. hit. They can't yeah. physically get away from it. Basically, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what's the uh, what's the what would you say is the most unusual? I know you've got you've got like a, uh, a uh, I would say a jaded kind of sense of perspective when it comes to mm. things um, regarding dead things, etc. Laura. So, but what would you say is right. the most oh, most oh, unique oh, kind of different oh, thing that somebody's asked you to do on a commission? You know, like um, what's... <laughs> Pro well, so I did a um, Jack the Ripper duck, um, which I've incidentally got a lot of hit messages for. Oh no! Um, oh yeah, people. It did. It did not go down as funny as I thought it would. Um, I mean, she loved it, so you know that was fine. Yeah, that's all um, that matters. Yeah, it was. Um, that was quite a good. She asked me to do another one, actually. Um, I think it's, um, I can't remember which one she's asked me to do now, but I wonder if I can find a photo. Um, but yeah, no, the Jack the Ripper duck. Um, I've got a make out in the freezer currently to do. Um, oh, I did actually stuff a pheasant called Phil. You got a okay. little name plaque. Okay. I was going to ask you if you've done oh, anything God. like, yeah. I was going to ask you if you've done any of the more traditional kind of taxidermy, you know, the sorts of things that people think about when they <coughs> talk about taxidermy, you know, like, you know, the the pheasants and the, you know, the, yeah, the deer there's, heads, etc. Oh, yeah, there's there you Phil. go. There's Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's going to chat. <laughs> yeah, Look, even, even says I don't know if it'll thingy. Yeah, the oh, best pheasant ever. I love it. Yeah. Um, he does now have like a little monocle and top hat. Um, <laughs> I love that. I don't have a photo of, sadly. Um, but that was, yeah. That I've done quite a few more traditional ones. But the, the thing is with the business, um, I have to sort of, oh, there's, a, there's Quack the Ripper, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There you go. Oh, fantastic. That's, that's so cute. That is, uh, I actually like, really I don't know if it'll... Such a distinguished I even got gentleman. A, little, uh, <laughs> a little gun and little rounds to go with. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love is that. Little a little prop knife. <laughs> yeah, Have you ever had any, that. like, birds of prey or anything like that? Um... Somebody, I've done a sparrow hawk. Um, so I did sparrow, I think it was last year. Um, but yeah, not many, because obviously there's a lot of rules and regulations around. Yeah, the sort of, there's a lot of legislation around birds of prey. Yeah. Yeah, so they actually had a license, and it, it's fine, because I'm part of the Guild of Taxidermists. I get a lot of sort of... Um, like licenses and stuff automatically especially for like bats and, and birds of prey and stuff like that so it means i can work on them and then send them back oh, to okay. the person who holds the full bats license are incredibly cool yeah yeah um i um i used to own a plot of land that had bats on the flight path um i used to love watching <coughs> love them that. them yeah uh, lesser horseshoe bats 
the tiny little ones, oh, wow. but they're cute. Hmm. Yeah. I just have paper strolls up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're really cute, them ones. <laughs> like, the less they are, they're quite the noisy, though. Yeah, they're quite cute, though. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So no, I with the with the traditional taxidermy, I it's a time thing now more than anything. I'm so busy yeah. with the insect missions and stuff. Something had to give, you know, and it yeah. it made sense to um, focus Just, on the insects. Well, that's where I imagine that's where your uh, largest customer base is, right? So uh, yeah. You know, that's uh, yeah, that's your bread and butter, isn't it? So. Uh, so, well, more yeah. people are going to be losing inverts than they are other livestock, yeah. isn't it? It's... Hmm. Yeah, and the other thing is it depends what you want to do. You know, there's obviously there's a quite a high um, need for taxidermists in, like, the game sort of industry, but, you know, that depends. Then then you get into a whole world of ethics and, yeah, you know, yeah. are you comfortable? Yeah. And yeah. it gets very complicated yeah. and, and everything else. Um, yeah. You know, I did, um, whereas I tend to do a lot of, like, more roadkill stuff. Um, I tend to be less of that, unsurprisingly. That's in good enough condition. So. Mm. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass trying to put skulls back together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did, I did trying to find the ones with no tyre marks on them. Yeah, <laughs> this is the thing. Um, I, I once pulled over on the side of a motorway because there was a dead fox, and I really wanted to have it. Um, but it got actually a little bit more squished than I realised. Turns out when you when you're passing them at um, at Certainly. high speed, they look a bit more <laughs> <laughs> a little more plump. <laughs> yeah, and like um, I was out on the motorbike with a friend recently, and when we pulled over, she said, "Oh, did you see that dead bird on the side of the road?" I'm like, "Yeah, I totally eyed that up." And she was like, "I'm just going to reach down and grab it for you," and I was like thought about it as well but there were nowhere to put it and i didn't want to put it like you know dead bird in my ears um, that, was, that was well intact as well like could have just scooped it up as i went past but car drivers might find that a bit odd yeah. <laughs> so uh laura uh francis has asked uh, what's the largest animal you've worked on the largest of phil the pheasant because he was quite big, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I appreciated yeah. how big pheasants actually are when they're not yeah. smushed on the side yeah. of the road. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was the biggest. And then smallest, we're talking about traditional taxidermy, um, probably a little mouse, just like the yeah. little dormouse ones, you know, little yeah. small ones. Yeah. Um, I have actually pinned the world's smallest butterfly, um, which was... Wow. Like half a centimetre big, and yeah, it was painful. <laughs> so, so is it, yeah, um, yeah. So I was just wondering earlier about what you, when you were saying about um, about the duck, the uh, the ripper, um, and the backlash you got from that. Do you get yeah. uh, do, you, do you get much backlash? You know, from like negative. Because obviously, obviously we all we all love you, and everyone, most people in the exotic world, you know, who who know you, love what you do and everything. But obviously, yeah. there's going to be a whole section of the <laughs> who completely disagree with what you do, and you know, and this, that, and the other. Yeah. So, do you get much kind of like? Uh, do you, are you? What what I'm saying is, are you blocking many people a day <laughs> on this, <laughs> yeah. social media? <laughs> this has one phone, just has like something just tapping, block, block, block. Yeah, I know. Ready? Um, touch wood. I've not had any nasty messages in a long time. Actually, okay. um, it was a thing a couple of years ago where I just seemed to on Instagram, especially. I don't know why. Um, I used to get quite a lot of hate, and it was quite difficult to deal with because yeah. people would say some really yeah. horrible things you know mm. i remember somebody once said they hope that when i have a child somebody pins it to a board i was oh. a bit like oh my God. A little um because people don't i don't think people realize you know that there is a human behind the account yeah 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 you know, and well this is this is the problem 
Yeah, this is a problem with social media generally, isn't it? With uh, across the board, anonymity, isn't it? Yeah, just people like, people yeah. just sit behind their uh, you know warrior key, keyboard warriors just sitting there. Keyboard you know, keyboard just, warriors. Uh, you know, not, uh, they don't appreciate that it's a human being who uh, they are. Well, they they may do, but they just don't care. You know, so. Uh, yeah, and I think I think Instagram used to be the worst for it because it didn't have your name. Oh, yeah. You know, you didn't have to have a profile picture. You could literally be anyone. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Hmm. Whereas Facebook, Instagram before, and now it's definitely Twitter. Like, Twitter is way yeah, worse yeah. than it used to be. It's so toxic. Yeah. Facebook has its fair share as well, I find. Facebook, mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we always had the one yeah. person in the group like, oh, what is this? <laughs> yeah. That's not how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah I mean, yeah. it looks a bit wonky, in my opinion. Yeah, but. yeah. But, you know. um, so I was wondering as well, uh, Laura, do you uh, do you to get get do you get more kind of lash backlash? Um, regarding certain subjects over others you know are there some subjects where it's fair game whereas some subjects are like <coughs> that's like no no you're getting a lot more kind of uh, lash you know feedback for that sort of, sort of thing um, yeah i mean it's inter- i think it's the interesting as, as, human, as humans we have we seem to have this like um we have this tier system of what's acceptable and what isn't when it comes to yeah. animals don't we do you know what i mean so yeah um Anything furry and cute yeah. tends to yeah. always I was gonna get say, this like, It's hatch. definitely the fluffy yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah I mean... like you know, I do, I do preserve. I have and do preserve still one puppies, um, and have returned them to breeders, and yeah. they're one of the things that get me the most backlash, um, because it's a pet dog and people just can't separate yeah. the fact that fortunately yeah. things go wrong breeding and yeah through no fault of anyone sometimes they just die yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely but it's, it's part of the risk cats, people get really sensitive about it and like and i understand it i do you know but i think people maybe project a bit a bit too much onto it sometimes yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some people really see the beauty in it and the preservation in it and, and everything else, whereas other people think we should be just left alone. But then, yeah. wouldn't be the same about Amanda. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah just cause I think what people's got to realise all these things you get, people send you. It's not like you've asked for it. People will actually like yeah. pay for your service to do it so yeah. it's like why don't they understand that it's not something you've purposely it's not done. catered it's to you you, like, you don't to have to get yeah involved. yeah yeah. So. yeah it's like it's you not know, your it's niche like... you have your niche other people have their own yeah 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 yeah, yeah exactly. so. you know and it's it's all over the website about the ethics and and you know how yeah. things are killed for, for what i do and, and stuff like that but yeah. i've also thought people don't read Quite often. Um, yeah. Oh so, no, they don't. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of answering very simple questions that are answered throughout <laughs> all social yeah. media. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I apologise. In fairness, they have come in pretty nasty, and then I've been like, "Yeah, no, that's not yeah. what's happening." Yeah. Um, and then I apologise. I'm like, Do you know what? Fair enough. If you can admit yeah. that you were. In a bit, a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like quick click, like quick scrolling through for like people nowadays. Yeah. Like Instagram, Twitter, it's like they see the picture yeah. and they're like, "Oh my god, you killed that duck!" And, you, <coughs> and you're, yeah. you're like yeah. putting all this stuff on it. I'm like, if you just read the caption, it's like this duck with a skill board, oh, blah blah blah. Honestly, it's just like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So it's yeah. like if you just and read the, it. <laughs> you know, even even like for the IHS as well as my business. I'm, it's hard to apply saying your answers in the description without sounding like you've done a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of the posts yeah. on there. It's just like, yeah. I'm like it's don't post here. It's like, really yeah, I, uh, I love, I love um, dipping it, dipping it onto the IHS whenever somebody <laughs> asks. It's me. great. I'm always, I'm always looking down for uh, Laura's response to uh, to certain questions. <laughs> <laughs> They're always. 
because I you can kind of read between the lines. You can kind of I can kind of I can kind of just see Laura's face when she's typing it out. Trying to you can hear the you could just read the text. You're like you could just hear the sigh coming from the text. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, 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 you know, I'm to post the sign gif a few times, um, especially when we run up to the shows and I'm sick of answering the same question. Um, sometimes things slip and I'll just like send a sign yeah. emoji because I'm just yeah. like, oh. Um, <laughs> it's hard, like, though, isn't it? Because obviously you're uh, you're representing the IHS, so you've got to, you know, you've got yeah. to have the utmost professionalism at all times. And you know, it, and we're the same. You know, anybody who's got a page or a, a group, it was a group yeah. admin. You know, it's your responsibility to uh, to be uh, perfectly reasonable and uh, respectful and understanding, yeah. no matter what people say. You know, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, so, but, yeah. And, it, and it's and, hard, isn't it? So. Yeah, and most people know I'm joking. You know, I mean, I, I think maybe one or two have been taken the wrong way. Most of the time, it's just a light in the mood because literally the post above probably answers what they've asked. But yeah. you know, <laughs> it's <laughs> it, yeah, you can, it's the run up to the shows where it gets tiring because, like, yes. the two weeks before it gets yes. just. It, I was going to ask else. you about. That. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I noticed because obviously I'm. Uh, in, when you're in the group and follow the page, you know, obviously I don't see all the all the posts, but there's always a lot more posts leading up to the uh, yeah. leading up oh, to the show. Yeah. So uh, I was just wondering how you balance that because that must keep you <coughs> keep you really busy having to stay up because you have to obviously monitor every single post, don't you? So uh, yeah, yeah. So obviously you've got the group as well as the page, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've got the message to yeah. the page, which are usually like membership related or, or yeah. something that's yeah, that's fairly right. yeah. membership yeah. stuff. Yeah, your yeah. your standard so you, your standard response is usually uh, it all the information is on the website. I think that's 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 yeah. my favorite. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm not trying to. I think sometimes I read that back and I'm like, man, I sound like I'm being a bit rude there. But <laughs> it's nobody, true. It's, it's, it's know, literally there. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, like you, it's like you've just said though you know you, you have to stay on top of all those posts all those comments yeah. you've got to, you know and then you get bogged down in conversation so it's 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 a fine art isn't it trying to give the relevant information in a way that ends the conversation at the same time and it's quite yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's an art form isn't it trying to uh, trying to achieve that because you know, I myself, I'm constantly behind on messages all the time. I never keep up with messages. I'm always missing messages. And, um, yeah. you know, I get so many a day, I just can't keep up. And the problem is yeah. you're trying to be nice by helping people. Yeah. But yeah. at the same time, they keep asking you, they keep asking you follow on questions. And so you end up yeah. getting bogged down in several, in like loads and loads and yeah. loads of conversations. And all you want to do yeah. is end the conversation because you ain't got time. <laughs> To speak to yeah. everybody about everything all the time, you know, and it's yeah. it gets a bit much. Like, so, uh, you know, if I literally say you're the answers <laughs> on the website, it's because it'll probably answer the next five questions they're going to ask me. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when we moved to the website, uh, just before COVID, I think, um, we made sure like everything was on there, you know, times, dates, membership, yeah, the lot, yeah. Yeah. in the hope that yeah. it would just say people obviously waiting for an answer as well you know um, so no, you just don't get that though there's that i'm going no, to ask the question could, and i'm yeah. going to get an answer you could basically <laughs> yeah. you could basically think up every single possible question ever asked ever in the world in the history of the world of ihs put it all on a frequently asked questions sheet on your That's website right. and you will still get people asking the same questions over and over again who, who just yeah. don't bother going to the website you know so yeah it's, just it's not just that like it's literally like it's pinned to the top of the page it's pinned to the group it's probably <laughs> been asked five times that day if you just scroll down a little bit yeah um yeah. i do actually decline a lot of posts and answer them yeah. in the decline notes because i'm yeah, like yeah. nobody wants to see it nobody wants to yeah. see 24 when's the next show it's sunday yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <Check> the <laughs> yeah. Um, it's literally just a linked event there's everything's there um but like it's 
yeah it's like i posted one the other day saying like it was it was meant to be a bit of a joke it was like wondering why your post has been removed click on the notification and you'll find out I saw because that i get so many yeah <laughs> i was thinking <laughs> a little bit of a bad mood that day um but like i get private messages constantly i've got one now saying like why is my post being removed and I'm like if you just <laughs> click on the notification we all we we put notes on to tell you exactly yeah. why yeah yeah um yeah. and then because then more often than not they'll start arguing with me about why it's been removed and i'm like yeah, yeah. the rules man you know yeah 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 and you know i was going to say this there's uh i was going to talk about this because uh Obviously, the IHS, because it's a uh, it's a herb and you know reptile yeah. show, they have yeah. so there's so much many much more legislation and rules and regulations oh, surrounding yeah. the show, um, and you know I can I can always I can hear Richard's Richard's head hitting the wall all the way over here from from where yeah. wherever he is, you know day in day out I know that he's very frustrated about a lot of things. And uh, yeah. I think just I think just again we had we had another letter with our with our recent IHS letters telling us about that yes. um, people have got to uh, they can't just traders can't just say I've got I've got a driver's license for my helpers uh, they've all got to be there and he, he he even suggested I want you all together I don't care if you wait and meet up in the car park and so you know you all have to come in and register together because like people are just like taking the mick all the time year in year out and you know people they are, are just taking and... things for granted and uh, you know and it's it's so frustrating <laughs> i feel richard's pain a lot of the time because you know we love the ihs show and there are powers there are people out there um you know lobbyists etc who basically would love in, love nothing more than to shut us all down and not allow us to do the doncaster shows ever more so we have to be constantly vigilant and you guys must go through the ringer every single year it must be so it just i just can't even imagine how difficult it is for you guys who do the organizing you know behind the scenes trying to stave off the uh you know the lobbyists trying to like make sure everything's okay you know you've got the inspectors there you've got the health and safety yeah you've got, you've got the vets yeah. there you've just got everybody yeah. there just waiting to make to, you know for, for somebody I to make a mistake it. so they can just yeah. shut it down you know and uh, it, honestly it must be a real it's just a nightmare for you guys and i think this <clears> is what people don't understand like i think people think we should and myself and whoever else has been difficult when we're quite strict but it's not about that you know the rules are actually in place for for really serious reasons um the reason we need to know who's on the table is because of laws and legislations the reason we need people to sign in is because the laws are like it's not just because we want to make it harder for you you know like trust me if we could just have it like the invert shows where you can wander in yeah. and you know <laughs> yeah trust me we would no, we can't, yeah. and and that and unfortunately, with people breaking the rules or, or stretching them, shall we say, um, it, we we kind of difficult is we do yeah. have the council at the shows, we do have vets at the shows. The vets are there for the animals' welfare, and obviously to make sure everything's fine. But they're all keeping a high on us, you know. And the council, we do work really closely with. The race course we work closely with um and it is a constant battle social media has made it harder yeah because yeah. lobbyists can post stuff online that isn't yeah. always true you know or, yeah, or always... last year yeah you know we we got we got videos hounded. last year we got hounded by um a certain organization shall we say um because it was covid they knew it could hit us while we were down they thought if they hit us while we're down, we won't get the shows back up. And and it, it has been a hard battle and we're still battling them now. And I don't think people understand or see that. Yeah. Because the thing is, we do have to be behind the scenes. Because the thing is, if we're posting about it, it gives them more of a voice. You know, yeah. and yeah. It, there's not the problem with social media is people have opinions and it can sometimes make the situation worse. You know, and and like some of the videos, well, the videos used weren't even from when they said they were. Um, 
you know, they were saying that the animals were wild caught. I don't know if anybody has been in the reptile hobby for very long, but royal pythons have not been wild caught in the hobby for a considerable amount of time now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there's no requirement for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's all, yeah, my blue eyed Lucy ball python yeah. came straight out of Africa. <laughs> yeah, you know, just found him like just, just hanging out under a bush, you know. Um, <laughs> and this is the thing that. <laughs> Quite frankly, there's no money in wild carting them. Um, yeah, the yeah. reason for wild yeah. for wild wild carting, wild catching, um, is to get them into the hobby to catch and breed them. Something that royal pythons have been in the hobby for a long time. So that's really frustrating because obviously people on the internet don't know that. Why would they? You know, they're mm. not reptile keepers, no, so they just no, believe what no, they've no. been told, and yeah. that makes our job really hard then because. When somebody's made the mind up, no matter how much you say to them, yeah, yeah. here's the facts, they just go, I'm not interested, you know, and yeah, yeah. it's like into people, they're in smallish tubs because it's actually for the reptile safety, you know, especially for transportation, we do have requirements on tub sizes, we have reviewed them, which have been changed in the, you know, we're constantly looking at these things, um, we're constantly dealing with the vets, we have certain species banned for that reason. Um, you know, I think what people don't always understand is it's a fine line between animal welfare and doing the show. Yeah. We like to, yeah. you know, we obviously we want the show, we want to facilitate it, but equally, yeah. you know, we yeah. everything yeah. to be as comfortable as possible. Yeah, and I think, I think to be honest, I think most people probably, you know, hand on heart, they appreciate that. I think especially like yeah. the breeders, you know, the traders and the breeders, most for the most part, I, I like to think that they, you know, they are understanding and think, you know, and they, they yeah. know it's they know the truth. Yeah. You know, it's it's fair to say it's not many, but the yeah. problem is it's getting one person will ruin it all. And that is how yeah. easy it is, you know, because this year people are gonna find out, um yeah. Um, yeah. about the US thing um, this year when people come to the April show to sign in on Sunday they're going to realise we've changed a lot of things we've got more security, we've got more lines and that's because one person you yeah. know did something and then it's caused problems for us so now we've had to make it a bit more annoying for everyone which yeah. is frustrating you know, we've, we've had to sort of make it, you know we've had to say you can't sign in unless you have everyone with you which I'm sure is quite yeah. difficult for some people, but yeah, you know we we've, yeah. we've got to look out for shows at the end of the day because you've got to look out. You've got to look out for for everybody, haven't you? You know, you've got to mm. make yeah. sure that everything's. You know, it's like you say, it's just one or two people who are uh, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. as as Richard likes to say, they don't seem to think that the rules apply to them, and uh, you he know, and, uh, <laughs> I've heard it's Richard true. say that so many times, but uh, you know, it's true. It's true. I mean, I've had quite a lot of conversations <laughs> with Richard on the phone, and he uh, he he's not shy about having a good old moan sometimes. You know, <laughs> so uh, he's, but, you know, he's a typical reason, Northern bloke. Yeah, you know, you know for, for good reason. <laughs> for good reason. It must be a real headache for him. And you know, and the last thing any of us want is to lose. You know. I've already displayed my passion and love for the Doncaster show, um, and obviously I want that to continue. And I'm just a, I'm just a, a very very minor minor cog in a very big wheel, you know. And uh, we're all involved. All the traders would be missing out big time, you know. Four shows yeah. a year. If if we weren't to have the Doncaster show, that'd be a massive hit. I imagine, especially people uh, in the reptile in the uh, reptile world. Um, oh, they really yeah. Do rely on the Doncaster show you know they uh, it's it, it's probably it's probably a big part of their of their li livelihood in their calendar for mm. the year you know that sort of thing so uh, yeah it's, and it, uh, it's a difficult one because as it's harder you know with Facebook's bans on what you can post which is why we have to be so strict on the group and yeah. everything else and it's not just that it's also the social side of it I think the hobby would seriously struggle the reptile hobby if we didn't have the Donny shows for social because some people just go to see other keepers to talk to yeah. exchange information you know and exchange breeding projects you know you, you've got people coming up from in london meeting somebody up in scotland you know to 
because we've got the exchange room and stuff like that. That without that facility, yeah. I think the hobby would would really get yeah. hit by it, and I think people yeah. would be less likely to read. And, and yeah, I think it like what's happening in the US and stuff, would affect the hobby really severely. Yeah. Um, because it ain't just it ain't just about you know selling surplus stock and stuff. It it is about a lot of things. You know, for me, I enjoy the social side of it. It is exhausting. Yeah. Um, but I think it definitely has a lot of benefits that aren't just selling stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think we've talked uh, we've talked quite a few times about the. Uh, the, the social side of, of the shows and that you know we have to go into shows and uh and just meeting other people you know it's just meeting up with people who you would never normally meet up with you know and uh, yeah exchanging information or just uh or just hanging out being being with your friends and being with like-minded people it's uh it's it, it's what uh, it's what we all look forward to throughout the year so uh so yeah so hopefully, you know, everybody behaves themselves, and uh, and we can have a uh, we can have another successful year at the Doncaster show. So, uh, yeah. well, I'm really excited. Yeah. I'm really excited by it. It's uh, still got so much work left to do tomorrow. Although we've not got as much work to do tomorrow. I'm going to uh, do some work but... tonight. <laughs> you what, Zoe? I've got some work to do tonight. So I'm going up tomorrow. Okay. So, yeah. I'll be sorting out I'll some Manchester's tonight that I'm taking to the exchange room. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I've got absolutely. Yes, including cool. yours, Mitch's. Yes. Don't forget mine. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I actually. Uh, Tell Rick that. He's just doing yours right now. <laughs> is he? Is he? I only want the best. I, know. Rick. I don't want none of this. Uh... Oh, there you go. How many am I getting? <laughs> I How many is he getting? He's asking. How many? So far, it's melting quite slow. Five so far. Five? Five? Yeah, don't bother with five. Don't, so don't show it at me. I'm messing about with five, they man. They do melt really slowly. <laughs> yeah. Huh? There's always been sub adults for three months so. now. Don't, uh, I, I don't, don't, if I'm not getting. I've still I'm got not, two sub adults. If I'm not getting 20, Same. don't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> I've you got want to wear another cinnamon boots tonight. Like, Luckily, they, they only take an hour. Tub. I don't do There's less like... than 20. No. <laughs> they pop the lid open, a sign, and they just want to... So, uh, there you go. Um, I right, was going to think... get one out, but I know it'd fly off straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I'm going to uh, wrap things up, guys. I think it's uh, I've gone over my slot. It's quarter past eleven, and uh, honestly, I uh, I've got so much to do tomorrow. I might have to get up quite early, and uh, <laughs> still got tons to do tomorrow. Aren't we go. Yeah. Still got a lot to sort <laughs> out. So, uh, so yeah. Um, just no, it's not actually that much, really. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, I haven't actually got as much to do as uh, we had to do before the Northern show, because that was the first show for us um, of the year. So uh, it was uh, a lot more preparation going into that one. But now we've got a lot of the prep work done, like a lot of the labelling and stuff that we've normally, you know, for all the newer species, that's all kind of done now. So, uh, yeah, there's not actually as much to do tomorrow, so it's not too bad. But, um, but yeah. So I think I'm going to wrap things up, guys. So I'm going to drop you all one by one. So Zoe, I'm going to drop you now. So yeah. thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you coming in and having a chat. Uh, I was thinking, I'm going to put it out there now, when I've got these sinos from you guys, because you and Rick have um, successfully bred them yourselves, I thought when I do my, uh, I thought I might do a little unboxing sort of thing, you know, my usual Saturday night thing. I thought I might do one on the Sinos. Thought I could get you and Rick on, yeah, have a chat, talk about the breeding, yeah. how it went, and all that good stuff. So, you reckon you up for that? They're the easiest species ever, but yeah, I'm up for that. Awesome. I nice would say Rick's probably not. He's too camera shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We'll uh, we'll sort work out. We'll work on him. We'll work on him. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you can try. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go over you and leave you right now, Zoe. So thank you so much, and uh, no worries for coming in. And uh, I'll see you Sunday, guys. See you. Soon.
Sunday. Right, there you go. Ian, thank you so much, my friend. You no have problem. Thanks for having me on. Joining in. Thanks so much, man. It's been lovely to have you here. We'll definitely have to uh, do some tarantula stuff and we'll get you Absolutely. on. You can, uh, you can pass on some of your amazing knowledge and years <laughs> of experience and uh, you can talk us through some cool stuff, man. So would that be all right, dude? We'll get you on. And Absolutely. We'll do- definitely. Yeah, we'll sort something out, mate. No problem at all. Time, my friend. All right, yeah. buddy. Thanks so much, man. Take care. Have a good show Sunday, guys. Thank you very much, mate. Take See care. You later. Take care, Ian. Jeremy, we're going to drop you next, my friend. You, are, <laughs> you, were, you were first in, so you're, you're one of the last out. So we're going to get rid of you, my friend. Thanks so much, buddy. For uh, Anytime, man. Yeah, no problem, man. We're going to do that interview sometime and all, mate. Don't worry. We'll, uh, yeah, we want to see you guys on the podcast at some point as well, because I need to start recording my podcast. Yeah. Just did one with the Instagram account. So I need you guys on a podcast at some point. Yeah, cool, man. No problem. No problem. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. All right, then, buddy. Thank you so much, mate. See you later, guys. Thanks for having me. See you, mate. And finally, it's Laura, the star of the show. It's uh, it's honestly, Laura, thank you so much. You've, uh, you've, you've given us so much insight and so much information about the show. I'm so pleased. So, uh, and also, we talked, we, we talked. A lot more about the taxidermy stuff, um, but I knew that was going to happen. I, uh, I, I, I wasn't going to allow too much taxidermy <laughs> stuff because obviously we have to save it. But we'll just do it all again when we do an interview. We'll do it all again, and uh, you know that'll be good. And uh, yeah, so uh, but we couldn't speak to you without letting people find out some stuff about the taxidermy and stuff like that. So, uh, so that was good. But it's always uh, it's always great to talk to you, Laura. We always have a good chat at the shows. It's always nice to see you, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been amazing. And uh, honestly, um, just to see how much stuff you do behind the scenes, you know, not only with your uh, taxidermy and dead set stuff. Uh, look, she's puffing out her cheeks because she knows she knows how much work she's got left to do between now and Sunday. So uh, um, yeah, Sunday's I mean, an early start as well because um, we can set up the night before this time. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's true. Because um, there's boxing yeah. on. Um, yeah. And last time we set up and there was boxing on, we didn't finish till half one in the morning, and I'm not doing that again. Um, so we've opted to get up at five thirty a.m. instead <laughs> on Sunday. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Richard prefers the early start. I'm a bit. We'll see what you say. Richard, Richard, Richard's of that generation, man. You know, early starts are like quite normal for old yeah. people. You know what I mean? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, like, I could we- I'm sure. I'm sure so, Richard's not watching this stream, but Richard, we love you, yeah, man. With, with, uh, <laughs> we're, I, I dare say he's not watching the stream, but you never know. You never know. He'll have seen the link. I'm sure he'll have seen the link. He, he may. He may oh, jump course, in. I, I think. We've, I think we've been nice, haven't we? We've been nice. I mean, you know, we've not said anything that's not true about Richard, have we? <laughs> no. Do, do you know what? Richard is a fantastic bloke. Genuinely, yeah. he's very yeah. Yorkshire, which I think people take the wrong way. You know, yeah. is the born and bred Yorkshireman, you know, and yeah. I get along with him great because of that. Um, yeah. And he's been doing it a long time and, you know, he runs the shows, like, yeah. he will, unfortunately, retire eventually. And, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I mean, he has to run it. He has to, he has to run it with a, you know, with a, with an iron rod, doesn't he? You know, he has to, he has to run it like a military operation. Otherwise, the whole house That's- of cards falls down, you know, and he's, there's too many people looking for a slip up, isn't there? It's, it's, yeah, it's all you, eyes are focused. Yeah. You know, when you've got the council there, which to be fair, we have a great relationship with, but they are there to, to check on us, which is fine. You know, we've got yeah, nothing to hide, but yeah. they're yeah. checking on us. The race course are usually hanging around somewhere. Um, I think it's fair to say the lobbyists will probably come as well, because how Over else there. would they get footage? Yeah. yeah. So we we are constantly being checked on and and that's fine. It's just it makes it for a tiring day. You know, Richard, bless him, is running around. It's not just that exhibitors can be sometimes a little difficult. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I can imagine. I can imagine. You don't don't have to say anymore. But, you know, I mean, the guy's under a lot of pressure. So, you know, and... uh, I know, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's that fear. It's that fear of, of the whole thing, just of losing the whole thing. And, you know, you can, I've had, I, like I say, I've had a few conversations with him on the phone. Not that I've called Richard up and just, just for chats, yeah, you know. Right. It's, like, 
<laughs> How's it going out, I mean, pal? I'm not pretending do, like, but... I'm not pretending Richard's my mate, but I have spoken <laughs> to him a few times for uh, particular reasons, you know, about my membership yeah, or yeah. whatever. But then we just we just end up speaking about, you know, stuff. And uh, he yeah. always and you can tell the passion in his voice, you know, it you can tell he's just oh, yeah. he's worried. He's, he's worried. He's, yeah. he's worried for the. It's like you said. There's more at stake than people making a few quid yeah. selling on a few circuits. Yeah. You know, the, the hobby yeah. in gen, the hobby in general relies on these shows, and he knows that. He knows it better than anybody, and so he, you know, he's worried. He's worried for everybody and and every everything that's involved, and uh, it comes across. And and you know, it, it'd be sad, it'd be so sad for everybody if 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 it if it was lost. And Richard would. Yeah. Uh, Richard would take that personally, I think, you know. He'd oh, he feel like he would because he'd, you know he'd feel he, like he kind of he'd feel like it's his responsibility, yeah. you know, to keep the whole ship yeah. afloat. Yeah. So he does he does care a lot about the shows and he cares about the hobby and you know, he, he genuinely wants it to succeed. It's not a job for him, you yeah. know. We yeah, yeah. don't exactly Absolutely. get paid thousands of pounds to do it and he puts a lot of work in. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's and it's because he does genuinely care and he wants the shows to keep going and he knows how important they are and he knows if something happened to them, that will be yeah. it. Yeah. Because once, yeah, exactly. once they get stopped... Exactly. It, it's, it's not like... i going to sound like him when I say it, but it's, it's not like it used to be before social media. It is <laughs> no, hard no. now. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if once it gets stopped... What, if, him, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, well, once it gets stopped, that'll be it. It won't get start. It won't start again. You know, it'll. Yeah, be because it. then it, then it becomes the oh well, it becomes the reason. Then you know, like if it gets stopped once, then that becomes yeah, the reason. Exactly. And, it, and it's, yeah. it's hard yeah. to fight against that. Yeah. You know, I mean, at the yeah. moment we've got the benefit yeah. that we've been running for so long, and we've worked with the council. You know, we've done the right things. We. You know, yeah. council have got yeah. vet, their own vets come in this time, which is fine. You know, like our vets are fantastic, but if an extra vet, not going to complain. You know, yeah. especially yeah. especially one that yeah, the council's yeah, yeah. provided. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. absolutely. It's just absolutely more hands on deck, isn't it? You know, and yeah. and to be fair, we have been asked to do things by the council, and we've we've um, we've worked on them. You know, they suggested putting heating in the crash area, so we put heating in. You know, yeah. yeah. Just do whatever. Like, just, just yeah. do whatever. They, do whatever they ask. You know, whatever you want, whatever you want. You know, it's. Yeah, but I mean, to be fair, they're not unreasonable. Like you yeah. know, the the idea about putting heating in the crash was actually a really good one. It's yeah. something we'd not thought about. The room's quite warm anyway, but putting a heat mat down, you know, can only benefit and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. They are they are reasonable. You know, and yeah. they've. Yeah. They've worked with us in the sense that we can now give out care sheets and stuff, which we weren't allowed to do previously, but now we yeah. can, which I yeah, think is yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah. Previously, they didn't want us doing that. So, you know, and now they've yeah. said we can. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, just got to keep it's all going good. along. Yeah, fighting great. A good so do you, do you uh, just, I know, I know we were wrapping things up, but there's still a million questions <laughs> I could ask you, Laura, so, uh, but I won't do. Um, but do you have much, much involvement in the, from now till, you know, till the actual opening the doors on Sunday? Because I know you've got your own stuff to do, but do you have any, like, involvement in the IHS setting up? Basically, yeah, are, you yeah, setting up, uh, are you setting up tables and stuff like that? You're doing all, you're doing all the donkey work as well? Yeah, I do, you know, because yeah. I think it's only fair. You know, yeah. usually obviously we do it the night before. In quite honestly, we usually would set up, have some fish and chips and have a couple of drinks and hang out, which is lovely. Um, yeah. This time we'll be getting up early, so we'll have us fish and chips, hang out, and then set up, you know, which <laughs> um, is yeah. fine. Um, yeah. The race course do put the tables up, but we have to put the tablecloths on, the numbers, any yeah. barriers, you know, just check the table plans right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it does... When you put in three hundred tablecloths, it gets a bit, a bit tedious. <laughs> absolutely. And when absolutely. I've been, like, the thing is, my job's usually no sticky notes on your table. That's usually my job. So I run round, yeah. so I walk yeah. the whole floor. Do you know what my ad? Do you know what my advice is, Laura? Because I do. You find it frustrating when like people like me come along. You've spent like all that, and you remove the tablecloth and that then I just put down. Often put my cloth on. 
Oh, sorry about that. There we go. There you are. Yay! Uh, I, yeah, I was just saying sorry. <laughs> I was just saying sorry about that. <laughs> I've come along and put my. I I won't put a tablecloth on my own because what's the point? I know I'm going to take it off. Um, <laughs> and most people remove them, but the problem is not everybody does. So it's yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you should say, I mean, you should tell tell Richard tell Richard to update the uh, tell Richard to update the form the filling in form. Put a yeah, little box and say, "Do you want table? Do you cloth? request a sheet? Do you want table yeah. cloth? <laughs> Oh, I might ask. I might. I might ask Richard. I might. I might ask him and just to see how just to see the steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> I'll let you ask that one. I'll let I'll let you ask that one. I'll um. I'll just sit back and watch. All right. Okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap things up because uh, it's nearly half past eleven. Just to say, Laura, thanks so much again, mate. Honestly, it's been uh, it's been brilliant. You've been absolutely fantastic. You've answered all everybody's questions, um, and you've been an absolute star. So thank you so much. Um, I knew you yeah. I knew you'd be amazing, and you uh, you didn't disappoint. So uh, thank you. So to anybody who is in the live chat still, thank you so much, guys. Uh, honestly. Say thank you to everyone. Thank you to Laura, especially. She's been an absolute star, and uh, I really appreciate it. This is Laura from Dead Set and also behind the scenes IHS. This has been the um, International Herpetological Society pre show drop in. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. And uh, if you're going on Sunday, honestly, come and say hi. Laura will be on Dead Set. Me and Gab will be Unseen Universe. Um, we will be there. I hope to see you there. Please come and say hi if you are going. If you're not going, look out. There might be some live streaming done on the day. It just depends whether or not the uh, race course Wi-Fi is up to the challenge. Um, yeah. I'm guessing it's probably that. not. But uh, I am that. hoping to do a little bit of live streaming. So if you can't make it to the show, Keep an eye on the YouTube channel here at Unseen Universe. There may be some live streams dropped in and out throughout the day. Um, we would love to do that. But if you are going to the show, I'd love to see you there. Thanks so much. Have a great day. And we'll see you for the post-show meetup. We'll probably do a post-show meetup um, probably a few days after Sunday. And we'll do that then. So thank you so much to everybody. Thanks to Laura. Thanks to Gav. Thank you to everybody at home. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>